have five o'clock, so I'll go ahead and call this, call this meeting to order um, the regular scheduled monthly meeting of the Hartford City Council, and we'll open for a word of prayer. Okay. Father, again, we come to you today thanking you for another beautiful day, but also, Father, thanking you for revealing your love to us, and pray, Father, for your guidance as we carry our meeting tonight, and just pray that uh, what's said and done would honor you, but also be of greatest benefit to the citizens of Hartford. So we ask for your guidance, and we ask, Father, that uh, you'll bless our time together and pray these things in your name. Amen. Amen. All right, I'll see. Do our visitors wish to speak to us tonight? or No, sir, I'm just here as a concerned citizen. Okay, thank you, sir. <laughs> What's so his concern, we... though? Huh? What's his concern, though? I got a feeling it'll, I got a feeling it'll pop up whenever the appropriate time comes. All right. Uh, you have your copies of your minutes of our previous meetings. Um, I want to be sure to take a look at those and see if there's any corrections, check uh, additions, deletions that need to be made. I think, but he had to wait till he installed like a 30 amp feed to the to the trailer. I don't believe the people are staying in it. I believe they're staying over in the activities building, which is not legal either. So yeah, <laughs> I don't know where they're staying either. You know, it really don't matter to me. But the, you know, like I said, there's two more that's right there, rock throwing distance. We've just got several in town that um, planning zoning doesn't have any kind of teeth yeah. in their ordinances. I mean, they don't have any. Well, they're looking to redo, and that's part of the revamp thing to have that in there. Yeah, but let's, we've got people to follow through, and the police will get involved. It's not going to do any good. Well, when they redo it right now, they passed an ordinance that the penalty section is just kind of one paragraph, so I think they're going to have to. Flesh that a little bit. All right, I entertain a motion to adopt the minutes if there's no changes or additions. I make a motion that we adopt the minutes. Okay, is there a second? Second. All right. All in favor, put the hand. Thank you. Uh, what about the council meeting minutes of February 28th now, since you have any? Do what? I have two separate sets of minutes. Oh, no. I'm sorry. I'm looking at this one. I'm looking over at that one. Yeah. I didn't realize it was the same day. Okay. I think most we do both pages. Yeah. yeah. It's been a long day, folks. I'm here to tell you. It's real long. If you had signed this, you would probably know me. Well, yeah. I keep signing to y'all. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right, uh, Mr. Patera, what have you got for us tonight? I've got a lot. I okay. Where would you like to go in? Yes. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> Is it on here? We can wait to it, but do you want me to go ahead and start with the resolution? Uh, the annexation resolution, I don't think it's on there. It was something we were going to have to add. Okay. okay. All right, so to catch you all up to speed, over six years ago, uh, the city police came to a meeting and asked the city to annex in 
the interchange and portions of uh, what was in the Natural Parkway to do some drug interdiction. And to do so, they um, we had to do a survey and work through the Department of Transportation, but we did an annexation ordinance. And uh, the survey at the time used the original city boundaries as shown by our old annexation ordinances up to that point. Well, at some point after we pass that, it gets up to the land office in Frankfurt and they map it and there shows a gap, like a small little gap between the city limits and what was annexed in. And after quite a bit of investigation, we determined that in 1981, the Transportation Department came down to a city council meeting, laid out a map and said, Hartford, are these your boundaries? And Hartford said, yes. And they signed off on it and sent it up there. Well, for some reason, Transportation used their own survey and didn't bother to use our survey boundaries from our annexations, which is why we have that small gap. It has taken over six years to get a survey and to get something that Frankfurt will accept to fix this issue. But I think if we finally got it fixed up to where we can do this, we don't have to do an ordinance, we can do a resolution because we're not annexing any new property, we're just correcting a boundary statement that was improperly noted. So do you have your big map that you wanted to show off? <laughs> I like <laughs> maps. <laughs> I do. You want to copy for one real quick? <laughs> now once we get that natural interchange going, do we take turns down there and take toes as people go by yeah. <laughs> for the Hartford for the Hartford fun? You start the sign up list and then see how many yeah. 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 This belongs this is Hartford's exit. <laughs> That's right. Literally. You have to pay to use to get, it. To leave. <laughs> It's ten, ten cents to get in, to a hundred dollars to get out. Yeah. Okay. That always irritated me. That when I lived in Frankfurt, I came down West Kentucky. Right. I got it cost me a dime to get here. Right. Her, so I'd go on the big drive and drop all the way. Right. Right. Just yeah. irritated me. Yeah. It takes you. Uh, you know, all right. That's it. The new map. So this, with all these arrows pointing to it, this little gap right here, that is the area that was omitted. Okay. The, because of the filing. It's not a trouble for that little piece. That's, yes, it has been. An incredible 19, amount. Nine, over 19 acres. Yeah. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. All uh, up and down uh, the strip there. Well, yeah. Uh, the linear linear yeah. Average. So that's what this resolution is. It is essentially all we're doing is correcting that original 1981 filing to uh, conform with our ordinances and include the omitted portion. So Dude. we can pass this around. You all can read it. It's like, or somebody wants to read it, but you just need somebody needs a first reading, and then somebody needs to make a motion to vote on it. So, we all want to. You want to read this? You want me to read it too, you know? <laughs> Not to help. I'm right. waiting for the movie. <laughs> yeah, I just like those little clips. <laughs> Six years in the making. And that's, that's right. Stuff. That's right. I'm really no. Well, thank goodness that one's over and done with. It took six years when how much money was spent. Make More days. than you want to, yeah. For 19 yeah. yeah. I tried to fix it a long time ago. I know, there. A lot of back. Oh, a lot of kick back on. You well, I think a lot of it was just people weren't willing to <laughs> accept the other side. <laughs> Uh, I needed it. I yeah. was driving. Yeah. 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 Mr. Biggerstaff knew what he'd surveyed. To put it you in perspective and why it took so long, this the original answer from Frankfurt to get that little sliver of land in there. That uh, our survey had already surveyed the entire acre of the acres in 1976 that was annexed in by ordinance. And I said no. Uh, Eric, you want to read it? <laughs> I'll read it. <clears throat> Tell us what's in it. If nobody read it. All right. I see the whereases are all in place. Okay. But, and the there for us. <laughs> You, the top portion there right. uh, in the head, if you want to read that as the header, it can be right. read, and then you all can vote if you'd like to make a motion. You want me to read that loud? Yeah. A resolution read. correcting an original KRS 81.045 filing and adopting a modern legal description of omitted, omitted territory previously annexed by ordinance. That's the top. Is there a second? Um, uh -huh, well, I'll motion second. Motion first? Yeah. Oh. Who made the first one? Okay, he just read it. That's right. Okay, I'm, I make the motion we adopt the resolution. Okay. I'll second. second All right. Discussion regarding the motion. Now, we'll get you if you said we had to pay for it. 
and I certainly am not going to try and guarantee that this will fix everything because every time we've sent them anything, they've liked to, to kick it back to us. Right. But I did personally call up there, and she seems to think everything's in order at this point. So, yeah. Awesome. Persistence. I'm going to call for a vote. Um, I'm going to call for a vote. Okay. I'm just waiting. Everybody through discussion on a favor. Thank you. Motion carried. All right. That one is on here. So the next thing I'm going to bring up is we were contacted by Charter Spectrum regarding a franchise agreement for cable television services here in the city. And Lisa and I had searched and searched and never could find an original agreement and didn't think there was one. So a lot of back and forth to try and figure out what we needed to do regarding bidding and, and everything else. Well, eventually, um, he did get back with us, and apparently there was one dating back to 1987, I think was the original. There was a, in the 90s, there was an extension, but everything expired in 2017. So now you all are looking at doing a new franchise agreement. This is pretty common. This is the same thing you do for your gas and electric and all that. The interesting thing at this particular point is back around 2005 or so, there was a telecom tax that was passed regarding cable television, okay? And at the time, you could only collect a telecom tax on these particular entities, and there's no franchise fees like you would see on your electric bills. Well, a few years ago, there was a Supreme Court case here in Kentucky that ordered that actually you can collect a franchise fee on these cable companies. And after some back and forth, I think right now what they're at least accepting as semi-settled law is that you can do one of two things. You can either collect the telecom tax or you can collect the franchise fee. So I asked Mr. Ucellus, our representative of Charter, to give me some idea. And based on last year's revenues, um, our telecom tax, our recovery on that was about $9,700, $9,800 for the, or, yeah, $9,000, $9,800 roughly for the entire year. When he ran the numbers under the franchise fee, it was going to up it to just shy of 18000 So it was almost going to double uh -huh. the revenue. So that gets paid to the city? Yes. So um, my recommendation is that you all would adopt that plan. And if for any reason another competing, competitor service comes into the area and the realization from franchise fee actually goes down below what you would otherwise recover from your telecom tax, he says right now they're allowing the cities just to switch back and, and uh, go back to the tax. The only issue would be that once we do a franchise agreement and once we work out the details, we'd have to give written notice, and it usually takes about 90 days for every, all the parties to approve and get everything up starting. But right now, what I've asked is he did supply me with a bid advertisement. We will have to do a bid for request for proposals to accept for the, um, the franchise. And then I've actually asked if he would attend our next meeting. That way, if you all had any questions specific to that, um, and we can go ahead and in, in the interim pass around the agreement that he has proposed with some of my notations on it. That way you all had any questions, you could question him. He would be here to provide answers because he's a lot more knowledgeable that particular area than any of the rest of us. So any questions on that issue? So, Mayor, I'll leave that up to you whether or not you all want to go ahead and get a motion to go ahead and bid for the franchise, for the cable television franchise. And we can get the details. Lisa, you can work out the details and get that in at some point. Okay. I entertain a motion to advertise for a franchise. I'll make the motion. Okay. I'll second, second it. All right. Take your pick. <laughs> Tony. <laughs> Any discussion regarding this? Or is this just something that. will bid on it? Just one. one. Yeah, you only ever get it usually. If we get any others, it'll be a surprise. Let's put it that way. I'd like to say it. Like voting on something that's only one person running. That's part of the living in a small town, you know. If you were in Louisville, it'd be a different situation or something like that. It's the same thing for Kennedy. Yeah, we only ever get one. One. Uh, I think it'd be good if they could have a, a drop off and pick up place in, in the county somewhere. If your cable box messes up, you got to go to Owensboro to trade it in and get another one. I mean, that might be something when he comes, you could probably bring it up to him and see if that'd be something they're looking at in the future. But this is simply just so, it, our the franchise agreement is simply so that they can use our streets and our right-of-ways in order to lay their lines and access. So. Yeah, but that would be good if they could throw that in, too. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not disagreeing. <laughs> <laughs> Any more discussion? 
If you're in favor of advertising for the bids, lift your hand. Thank you. Motion carried. I'll give you that form. Y'all can get that for now. Um, okay. <coughs> This is on the. Uh, this mm -hmm. is on there. Do you want to wait? Just wait when that gets on there. Mm -hmm. Okay. And that's on there too. So I'll wait until you get down to that too. Okay. All right. Then for now, for old business, uh, first item there is Veolia. I received a phone call from uh, David the other day, and he said after. For the consideration, they decided that they were not going to submit a second bid or second offer to us regarding uh, taking over the water plant asset management. So that now becomes a closed situation there. All right, the uh, garbage truck, I uh, texted you. We had an uh, issue last week. Um, our old garbage truck just started coming apart on us. <laughs> uh, the gate, which is the big part at the back that closes in on the garbage. Uh, if a weld broke, this is a factory weld, and broke and it caused the <coughs> gate to swing and fortunately they were able to pull things back together uh, we did a little welding on that, reinforcing where the weld broke. Uh, it broke somewhere else again. Well, there's cracks all over the, our bed. Uh, it's a 2006 model bed, and there's cracks all over it. So we borrowed uh, Beaver Dam's spare truck. The problem there is it requires a CDL driver. We've only got one, that's Jason. So he drove, and we finished the garbage collection last week. But then uh, we got online and found an exact duplicate of the bid that we've got. It's a new way, 2006, it's 11 yard. Uh, it keeps us under the CDL, 11, 12 yard is about the limit for a CDL. And under that, 12 and under, we can Anybody can drive it. doesn't have to have a CDL license. So we found one. Um, I deemed it to be an emergency, so I contracted with the, the place where it was, contacted them. Uh, they would sell us the bed. Actually, it was sitting on a frame, had a rear axle and everything. I thought it was just... From the diagram or from the picture, it looked like it was sitting in the yard. They had it sitting on the frame where they could move, move around, but it's still attached to the frame. Well, we contracted with a company over here in Owensburg to go up to Oshkosh, Wisconsin to pick it up. And that was about, she estimated it's going to be about $1,500. It's a little over 600 mile trip. And so, anyway, we bought it, brought it down here. It's exactly like the one we've got, is in good shape. But rather than try and take our old bed, go to all the trouble of taking our old bed off of our chassis and putting this new bed on our chassis, what they've decided is since all that broke was back here at the gate, that we're, it's simple uh, to take it apart. There's just uh, two pins at the top, the hinge pins for it, and then there's two cylinders on each side. And so the hoses that come back to those cylinders from the reservoir, uh, that's all it'll take to swap it over. So what we're going to do is take the gate off of our... We're going to use the one we've got as long as we can. When it starts breaking again, then we'll be able to take this gate off and put it on there. That, that bed uh, was $10,000. And the hauling fee is $1,500. And so I uh, come to you tonight to ask for a confirmation from you that we need to purchase that. And the deal's already done. <laughs> I'm coming to you post, ex post facto. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, but it was an emergency, I felt. And uh, I mean, we can't pick up garbage and pick up trucks or anything like that. It's just. 
we do well to do what we do. So anyway, I would like a motion to spend ten thousand dollars for a garbage truck bed and the proper fifteen hundred dollars uh, for hauling <coughs> Wisconsin down here. I make a motion that we okay. go ahead and purchase the Thank bed you. since we already have it. <laughs> well, I mean our our hopper <coughs> is still in good shape, but we still we've got this other one that should the need ever arise, we can use it as well. So we can take parts off of the one we've got, uh, cylinders, hoses, valves, you name it. Uh, if we swap, if we ever, whenever we do swap the, the gate part of it, which is the heaviest part of that, uh, of the bed, we still have the usable parts off of our, our old bed, you know, that we can utilize on a new bed. What I'm trying to do is just prolong the life of our garbage truck for a couple of years anyway. Probably okay. build up a fund to yes. purchase yeah. Uh, two, two thousand. Is the possibility if you, when you do get a new truck, the part that it's a non-CDL truck, does a CDL size truck would it be stouter and? It just holds more. It's nice. It's the construction on it's not any better or anything like that. It just it's holds. A bigger truck. It? It, it's a bigger truck. Is all it is. It probably probably would have tandem axles, rear axles instead of single axles. Okay, it would, instead of hauling 12, 11, 12 yards, it'll haul 20 yards or something like that. So, I mean, we'd end up making fewer trips down to the landfill, but it'd be heavier going across the scales, you know. So, I mean, the only thing you would save is just the number of trips you would make to the landfill. And does it require a CDL driver? And right now, we've only got one. Yeah, that's having CDL drivers, though, that's not a major problem, is it? Well, if you got a CDL required truck. Yeah, you know, I mean, the school board up there, I train drivers that get their CDL, and we have like 60 or 70 people with CDL drivers. Yeah. They, they could go ahead and get it, they just never have had the need to. I mean, he just not, not any expense to it, except they yeah. have to have a physical and stuff like that. Which is not a bad idea of the right. So we need two or three of them guys to have theirs, don't we? Well, really, we don't have anything that requires no, a CDL drive, you know. In case we did, though, I mean, yeah. we just like, well, you had to the other day. Of course, you had to understand, too, that a truck, this CDL truck that's got the tandem axles and almost 20 yards is going to cost twice what the under CDL with 12 yard or 11 yard. Yeah. Hopper's going to call I'm it. just asking about it because yeah. if you had one that was, uh, I don't know what the life of garbage truck would be anyway. <laughs> uh, you got a first motion on two? Pardon? You have a first motion on two? Yeah, I do. I've got a motion on four. I need a second. I'll We're second. We're already discussing. Second. Okay. Now, the discussion. Um, I mean, this is a 2006 model that we're driving. So 13 years is, I think, pretty good for a garbage truck. It's, not the, it's really not the miles you get on it, it's the hours on the engine and the... Operating yeah. hours. The funds come from, in that motion, from where? Pardon? The funds. Oh, from, yeah. Where, I mean, yeah. when you're making that motion. The... the, the uh, the money for the bed has to come out of the sanitation fund, but in that motion, could we put that we were going to supplement the sanitation fund with funds from the occupational tax to make up that? Could we use that if we already got set aside for a new truck to pay for that? We don't have anything yet. We still got one more month to go on that other pay before we start that fund. Okay. And it's only four thousand dollars. So. Yeah, it wouldn't take three months to buy the bed. Yeah, <laughs> it's a wasp it went right by your head, Terry. It would have landed on the flag back right there. Okay. I might run it out of here. 
Would that be agreeable to take the funds out of the OT after some yes. at the okay? Would that be agreeable with yes. you, Kenny? Okay. So the motion now is that we take ten thousand dollars out of sanitation fund plus approximately fifteen hundred dollars to pay for hauling funds to be uh, replaced with money from the occupational tax. Okay. Any more discussion? We could do our changeovers ourselves for the city maintenance. Yeah. Yeah. All in favor of that? Okay. Thank you. Motion carried. Okay. Uh, water, plant, water plant asset management software. All right. We had talked about and looked at various software uh, companies. Our water plant employees had to go through their annual check. That's what all the books are sitting over here in the corner. Uh, they haven't come back to get them yet, but uh, the Department of Water was here and went through all of our books, checking records and licenses and everything. And she gave me a little information sheet. There is, a, there is an organization, a company, I don't know if it's a company, I haven't, I've talked to one lady or through emails. They provide technical assistance in asset management, energy efficiency and management, fiscal planning and funding coordination, rate setting, water loss reduction and conservation, resiliency planning, whatever that is. But it, they provide free. Okay. <laughs> you both so, like free. I, it's been a long discussion, a, guys. <laughs> yeah. I have a I have a meeting uh, with her uh, by telephone on uh, April sixteenth, and she's going to call and just try to get some information about what. There were three areas that they wanted to focus in on, but we choose which three areas. So what I told her was asset management, which is one of the things that we've been focused on with Veolia, with the software and everything. <laughs> um, water loss reduction and conservation. And then I said the resiliency planning because the rate setting, we just set rates last October. We can't raise rates right now. Uh, the fiscal planning and funding coordination we can get that through grad without any problems there. Energy efficiency and management, we get that through the engineers of water management. They've told us over and over again how to take care of our efficiency and in our energy usage. So those other three areas, asset management, and water loss reduction, and resiliency planning were the three that I told her we'd focus in on. So. Anyway, if you all would like to look at this, if you'd like to come and attend the attend the uh, session with her, it'll be uh, 10 o'clock on April 16th, so here in the office. So you're more than welcome. I want to listen to her before, you know, I can make any kind of a recommendation to you about, about anything like that. All right, Ms. Terry, you want to take care of the alley closure? I can. Last month, uh, Ms. Morris came to the council meeting and asked about closing an alleyway that was never developed off of Thomas Avenue. Yes. Um, and it won't surprise you that the old records for the city are very difficult to come by, so it took a little while to hunt up the old, uh, the, um, old city plat. But essentially what we're looking at is the area marked here in Block O. And this is an alleyway, it's a 10-foot alleyway that was never actually developed or opened up. And at one time it was reserved there, what we think, probably to deliver ice, milk, that sort of thing, between the old lot beds. Um, I've prepared an ordinance that describes the area to be closed. And um, there are certain findings the city council has to be made. It has to first find that the um, area, the alleyway to be closed serves no really useful purpose and it would be in the public interest to close it and the second thing is you have to identify the abutting landowners and get their consent after you give notice well in this particular case if we close just that portion it's about 110 feet right there 
then the only abutting landowners are going to be uh, Donnie and Carolyn Renfro, and that was who Ms. Morris was here representing that day. Um, and I believe they may have came by this afternoon. Is that correct, Mayor? Yes. And signed a consent. Yes. And they're my understanding that they're in good standing with the city. They are in good standing. Okay. So what we have now is. Uh, we have an ordinance for the council to consider, and if you all would like to close that portion, this will be a first reading, and after a second reading, it can be published. So, here's the ordinance. Whoever wants to read it, if they want to read it. All right, where do I start? You just do the heading. Just, there. just the heading. Just the heading. Yeah. You can dramatize it too. <laughs> With the with the title, City of Hartford, Kentucky, yes. Ordinance Number Two Zero One Nine Zero One, an ordinance to close a portion of an unnamed alley located south of Taylor Avenue and Block O of the East Hartford Edition. Okay, it? that's it. And we'll have a second reading next month, and unless we have a special call made for some other reason, and at that time we'll entertain a motion to adopt that. Ordinance. I'll just kind of give you a hint. Whenever, whenever y'all close any roads or alleys or rights of way or something in the city, it is it has to be an ordinance. It will have to be published, and then actually a copy gets um, recorded with the county clerk's office. So, by law, I know there's been some confusion in the past. Um, by law, when you close something of that nature, then usually through the middle, it goes one side to the abutting landowner over here and the other side will go to that abutting landowner. So it's not really a deed from the city to anyone. It's just a matter of operation by law. It disperses like that. So um, that's all I have on that one. All right. Uh, well, uh, let's see. I want to address just for informational purposes about the concrete cutting. They have done some of the work. I'm not satisfied they've done it all and I haven't contacted them. I keep waiting to see if they're going to come back, but they have uh, cut down trip hazards along Main Street on the east side, uh, Center Street, behind the courthouse here on Apple Alley, the sidewalk that we own, and then they've gone in front of the library all the way down to uh, the get-go down there, and they've sawed down, and they look, they're good. There's still some areas over here on Center Street that they're going to have to come back and do that we've contracted for and they've not completed. So I haven't talked to Jessica yet. But uh, regarding the, we talked about purchasing a pump at the water plant. We're having second thoughts about the one that I brought to you, primarily because it's a gas engine. Um, we're looking into getting one with a diesel engine that will. Be well, the, the gas engine was 23 horsepower. The one that we've been looking at for diesel engines is 50 horsepower, and uh, that's what we, we've got diesel now, uh, the one that we have. And so, we're looking at trying to see if this one meets our needs. Uh, of course, being a diesel, being a bigger engine, and everything is going to be a little bit more so. I haven't got uh, any recommendation to bring to you regarding that, but we just felt like the other one, the other one just had a 1.6 gallon fuel tank. So somebody's going to have to stand down there, we're going to have to modify it and put a bigger tank on it, what we're going to have to do. And, and then, uh, anyway, uh, the sewer flow meter, we had talked about purchasing a magnetic uh, meter. Uh, in talking with engineers, they say that that's not the best meter to use because that meter only reads accurately if your pipe remains full constantly. And sewer pipe won't do that. So he said uh, the best thing to put in there would be what they call a flume meter, which is just basically a box. You got your sewage coming into the concrete box. Uh, it narrows down, they measure the flow with an electronic uh, device, and it goes back out of the box. Uh, that's We're still working on that one, so I don't have a recommendation to bring to you regarding that. But uh, he thought it would, might be somewhere in the $20,000 range installed, you know. 
Uh, what that will do is that will allow us to know exactly what we're sending to the plant. And if they have a larger reading, then it will be because of leakage in their lines from from that meter uh, on down, which includes their pump. Yeah. Um, it wouldn't take long for it to pay for it. No, all not at all. And stuff. Yeah. yeah, not at all. Mm -hmm. And what it would do is pretty much put the pressure on them to take care of their lines and <laughs> and their. The, the, we feel like. There may possibly be some leakage in the uh, in the sewer pump well itself, you know, and so we're trying to eliminate any anything that we don't need to be paying for. Is what we're doing. Oh yeah, I'm just want to catch up on that. All right, let's take a look at the uh, new business then. Uh, the reach alert. We were approached by a. Uh, a gentleman who offered, and I think Dean, uh, Dean Minton had looked into this before. Uh, what what this is is a alert system for the citizens of Hartford. Okay, we would be able to send out messages either through text, through voice, through. Uh, you've got uh, you've got a brochure in your packet at the back that was we copied that for you. It's the first one after the treasurer's report and we haven't done our treasurer's report yet. Is that off the thing? We got oh, plenty I passed time. I skipped over <laughs> after Tara she got me started on business. <laughs> anyway, you see the reach alert brochure there. Uh, we can send an alert to uh, the whole city we can send an alert to certain streets, like if we had a water line break on a street, that we could send an alert to the citizens along that street, just telling them we've had a water line break. There is no boil, uh, there is no boil water advisory with this break, or we could tell them there's a boil water advisory, you know, until further notice. Uh, we could send it to individual households. Uh, we could say, I paid your water bill this month, you know. Oh, I know. Uh, oh, I know. <laughs> you know, yeah. and that would, save, uh, that would save Sarah from having to call, you know. And earlier late trash pickups. That would always yeah. work as well. Uh, it would be a means of just communicating with the citizens, mm -hmm. sure. you know, that we don't have right now. Um, it, they base it upon the number of households in your city. We have approximately 1,100 households, and it's usually they would charge about two dollars per household for a year. Okay, so it's twenty-two hundred dollars for a year. They say since we belong to KLC, that the first year they would cut that in half. It would be eleven hundred dollars for the first year uh, to implement this this program here being able to notify people in Hartford about anything. So, um, do they manage this system? Yeah, they do. How are they going to do it? Where are they? Uh, I don't know where they're out of. But and what we would do is we would, note, we would send them a short message like, uh, you know, to the, uh, to the residents of uh, Walker Street, uh, the water line break at uh, such and such Walker Street uh, does, does not require a bull water advisory or, uh, you know, to uh, individuals, we could tell them, we'd have to send them a list of individuals to remind them that today is the, uh, the ninth of the month and uh, penalties penalties go on uh, your water bill after tomorrow or something like that or we could remind people that today is the 23rd tomorrow's the last day to pay uh, water bills before you know uh, they will be shut off or something like that we could Individualize it. You could have small groups. You could have large groups. You could have the whole city. You know, yeah. But we would send them 
a message and they in turn would uh, send it to the designated recipients. We could do it by, they would do it by text, they would do it by voice, and they would do it by email. Just curious? Mm-hmm. If, I'm just curious because I'll... Oh, I'm just <laughs> You make him mad. Choice. I don't like those things that sting now. <laughs> okay. um, I know, like City of Hodgenville, for like their notices regarding water line breaks, they just use like the city website and the city Facebook page. What What's the price difference? Um, what do you mean price difference? Well, I mean, like that, those would be free. I'm just curious, like what what you're looking at on price. Well, difference. how many people? My thing is, how many people would utilize? Uh, email or something like that. We've got some older citizens that don't That's right. No computer. But they can and be notified by phone or they can be But a lot of them don't have answering machines too. So what happens then? Well if they, if they got be a, at the if they've got a cell phone, there would be a text on that cell phone, a text notice. The school system uses that same type system. Yeah. If they got early dismissal or no school that day, it calls every, every how household. much is it? Twenty two hundred a year. I, I just can't see how it would lessen anybody's work here. I mean, somebody's going to have to contact them every time something happens. And if, if for instance, and please, we ever have another ice storm or a major flood, and how many people are going to be without things, utilities, including phone service, what do you do then? Well, it'd be just like everything else. It'd be, be running down. up and down the streets. They don't want to I just bring it to you for your, you know, yeah. your consideration. I mean, that, I'm not recommended doing it. I'm not recommending not doing it. So. Well, it sounds like a good idea. If I don't get anything out of selling it to you. <laughs> <laughs> would that be tacked on you? Water bill, or would that be taxed on your water bill? Or it would or, just uh, be no well, taxes, or no. What? It would. I mean, it's two dollars a year. You yeah. would, you know, probably we just take it out of general fund. Twenty two hundred dollars is all. But I did. mean, but all the people don't have to pay it. No. Oh, okay. Yeah, I mean, how are you going to get everybody's phone numbers? You don't. We don't have everybody's phone numbers now, but you know. I mean. As a citizen, I'm just going to tell you, I don't give my phone number to more people than I have to. I, I, I don't want you calling me. <laughs> well, if you didn't want it, you wouldn't have to have it. No. You don't have to be notified. They would charge us according to the number of households. They said we've got approximately 1,100 households. Yeah. I don't I don't think we have 1,100 households. I think that's... Water accounts. Water meters. That's water accounts, but, you know, that includes businesses and schools mm-hmm. and churches and everything else. <coughs> so it's probably less than that. Yeah. But y'all want to chew on it a month or yeah. you just want to How would we go about getting the phone numbers? So, well, I'd say water bills would be the best way, you know, that we put a notice on there or we put, put something in the paper. Of course, everybody doesn't take the paper either. So. Uh-uh. Not anymore. No. But they're going to charge you twenty two hundred dollars a year, even if you only get fifty phone numbers. It's two dollars. No, it'd be two dollars per household. So I think what that charges. Don't matter to me. And me either. <laughs> you want to think about a file a month? I think it'd be useful when you put it in my chair. Well, he put it in the back of the piece. The water line <laughs> still be broke when it breaks. Yeah. You know, they just won't know about it. It's a. It's just a one-year contract. It's not a long-term contract. After every year, if you decide you don't want any more, you cancel it. Uh, what they would do is type a single message and send it to be a text, voice, or an email. It go, could go to the entire city, to specific streets, to individual addresses. could go however you designate it. Of course, you'd have to tell them, like... These are the addresses that we would want to send it to, or something like that. Well, pick up truck with you sitting in with the speaker saying, You have no water, you have no water. Moving <laughs> <laughs> right along. Mm-hmm. What, what's your, you just wish to make any kind of a 
move on this or well we've tried for a year for a year we had eleven hundred dollars okay. yeah. I, I don't know i think there's other means of getting information out there and if people choose to want it then they can get it like you can put stuff on facebook and people can sign up for notifications uh, and it's really nothing like no sometimes people don't just don't want to be contacted facebook. Yeah, well, <laughs> yeah. And I mean, you may More not want to text think. either. Stalker, yeah, I got like 25 likes from you on this I did. This older generation what did you do? doesn't use Facebook. So the younger generation doesn't either. <laughs> no, that's true. So. I'd say give it a try for a year. I don't. Okay. We wouldn't be considered a telemarketer or nothing like that. <laughs> I will say there's, there are other companies yeah. out there that do the exact same thing. I don't know what they. These were the ones that approached us, so I told them I'd bring it to the council and let you all decide. How do, what about the phone side? Because, like, I've got my phone set, shut down to where that I won't get notifications unless it was, like, Amber Alerts. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, you can do that through Apple. I don't know about it. But then, if they had my number, I wouldn't get it, right? Right. I mean, as far as Apple, I don't know about Samsung. Well, I mean, you can block things, but, like, Shogun texts me every other day about a lunch special. Uh, well, <laughs> <laughs> okay. Do you wish to make a motion or are you just want to let it die? I let it die. I mean, yeah, okay. I'm All right. The uh, next item that we have there is the EDC member I'd like to recommend that uh, uh, Glenn Thompson be appointed to the Economic Development Committee as a uh, business me uh, member to that organization or to that committee. Is there a motion to that effect? I make a motion to. Okay. Do you know who, everybody know who Glenn Thompson is? He mm -hmm. and his wife were the ones that all opened up the Cop Cafe. Uh -huh. Okay. Okay. And there, second that motion then. Yeah. All right. Any discussion regarding that? All in favor? Okay, thank you. They're very uh, energetic and enthused about trying to broaden their footprint in, yeah. in Hartford. So, all right, um, that brings us up to the ordinance re regarding the licensing of golf carts and UTVs on on uh, Hartford streets. I'll kind of touch base with that. Last month, you all had mentioned something about sticker permits and daytime operation versus nighttime operation, license drivers and everything. And I don't know if you all were able to get copies and reviews of those ordinances, but all that's already in there. Um, it's just a matter of enforcement. The only real thing I think that was brought up last month that may need some more clarification is um, the time for the renewal of the permit. And... Um, we can do that, but before I prepared anything, since it does cost money to publish and create an ordinance, I thought maybe if you all had reviewed everything, just tell me what changes you'd like, and we'd try and do it all at once. The, so there is already a sticker requirement. Mm -hmm. yeah. It was a, it's, a, it's, it's all in the ordinance now. Whether or not it's ever been enforced or actually right. done, I, well, where are you good. getting it? Do you have the ordinance? Yeah. yeah. Because what the police department like, would like to do is have just a yeah. colored. Sticker this year, from, we would start July 1 through June 30th. It's like licensing on your boat. It is, it is, exactly. But that way, that if they encounter a golf cart, they can see whether it's licensed yeah, or not. Glenn so said it they don't really care whether they're licensed drivers or not. Well, well, that's required under the ordinance is that you have to have a valid operation. Well. But they have to be able to catch people, you know, that's part of it. Well, if they'd get out and patrol the streets, they could catch them, let me tell you. When we talked about last time, it wasn't two days I was going up Smith Street. You're going to get me called. And it was when school yes. let out. And a boy looked like he might have been middle school age, yep. driving the golf cart. <coughs> and his brother in there looked like he might have been three years old. Yep. That was a long <laughs> But one for one year, we'd have one color of sticker and next year we'd have a different color sticker and do maybe after so we have do we have a sticker We're, we don't have them yet no that's what i was i mean it's, have, it's in here the estimated cost of we did price shop they were around two dollars right. roughly i mean that's just a ballpark right because i I've, I've never seen one 
I know we talked yeah, about we having never, the, the I think permit. You have, I think you have one permitted cart in the city right now. Is that yeah. Right? Are you it's kidding me? Cart. No. That's why we uh, need we, something to. Yeah, you need the. There is the stickers on here. We just the police don't know who's. Uh, Right, because no. you can't just pull them over to ask them for their permit because that would be not legal. But uh, if they you don't have a sticker display, I mean, we didn't tell them where to display the sticker. We just said display the sticker. I, I mean, like I said, right. there's certain changes. With it. A lot sure. of that came straight out of the statute, which because the, the we can make it more restrictive, we just can't make it less restrictive than the case. Sure. Uh, they're pretty strict over Beaver down there. They ought to, we ought to be here. Hmm? Any way you go in Hartford, you're going to cross the U.S. Highway. Mm. And that's against the law to have them on that. Well, you can, you can cross it. At a 90 like degree, it, yeah. You know. Well, you got to see them running down 69. No. <laughs> no. I don't even like to get on Clay Street. You get killed, huh? Yeah, that's right. I that's the truth. The emperor that there's a 35 mile an hour speed limit like Clay Street, uh, Union Street, Main Street. Uh, they're allowed to cross it at the most direct route, but uh, not to be on it, you know. Oakwood Drive on Saturday. You think That's been our imagination. Do <laughs> what? Oakwood Drive, you think it's a drag strip on yeah, Saturday. Especially in the 20 mile an hour speed zone. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. You should live on our mountain. <laughs> they're everywhere. Oh, yeah. I want to right now. I understand some of them are... <laughs> they're everywhere all over yeah. the place. Yeah. Some of them are souped up where they run a little faster yeah. than a normal golf cart will. So I can see the placement of the radar <laughs> gun on golf carts. Well, get over here. Okay. Um, you all tell me what changes you'd like to see, and I'm happy to draft something. I just... Most of those things you had mentioned, I knew were already in there, so I... Well, yeah, I wasn't clear about if there was a sticker that was the major discussion. Yeah. It doesn't do us any good to have a permit without some sort of identifier that we can, right. you know, pull over the car or the cart or not. But, yeah, like I said, I think they only ever had one applicant, so I'm not quite sure it was ever. Right. Where did he put his? <laughs> Make he could be the stancher. <laughs> Still laying on a dresser, I guess. <laughs> Wouldn't doubt it. Because it says display it. That's what what they did. It was it, when they create a permit. It's a half sheet, mm -hmm. and then they most of the people that we only have survey so understands we have one right now that's not expired. Just mm -hmm. technically the way that it is, we've issued many more than that. But what they did was they would take the one and then they would put it in a plastic sleeve and then they, they kept it on the mm -hmm. golf cart. No, there was no display of. It. Anything like that. But the difference between displaying it and having it is again probable cause. Sure. Uh, but at that time, uh, I don't know, we probably in total had 15 or 20, but no one has renewed the point. I guess if, if we're going to have something like that and we have an ordinance for it that we've already developed, this will help monitor it better. Right. What do we want to do about it as far as? Have it, you do away with it, or clarify it and enforce it. That's the. Well, I'd say that if we need to clarify about a sticker and make them put it where we, yeah, yeah where you want it, right in the middle of the visible. windshield or yeah. visible, you know, right whatever. Back you know, in for, yeah. yeah, visible. Mm -hmm. Display yeah. it in a practical, visible. Right. <laughs> and it doesn't say that. It just says display. So I, that would be just a, amending the the verbiage of it, basically. Mm -hmm. Is there a penalty written into that ordinance? There is. I think so. I think it's, it's a fine. It's fifty dollars for the yeah. first, and then a hundred dollars for subsequent, and that's just the fine. Mm -hmm. We confiscate <laughs> then. Yeah. You gonna arrest kids? On, you know, the well, they gotta have a license. Yeah, they do. Yeah. And and insurance. Yes, it's supposed to be insured and, as well. And so, uh, you know, they're not gonna go to juvie for it with their parents. Can, yeah. Personally, probably the per know their personally, one of the bigger things that I've had concerns with are the children that operate through the city limits, and also at night. I've yes. seen several that are. Oh absolutely. yeah, yeah. Right. Well, when um, insurance, do you have to have insurance separate from your automobile? It probably from one is of those? Side of the KRS requirement yeah. for insurance. Oh. So that's that's on the ordinance sites the requirement for uh, 
So there, I'm sure there'd be a minimum liability. Huh. I had a golf cart out the country club one time, and they, some vandals got hold of them, a bunch of them. They just used them like bumper cars, you know. Oh, that was fun. Like and found out that uh, it's covered under my homeowner's insurance. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. Most of them are in umbrella policies. They all they all tend to sure. cover those things. In fact, that, this was a three hundred dollar cart, and they offered to buy me a new one for twenty eight hundred dollars. You know. Right. <laughs> Most of the time, you're going to find out if it's injured at an accident. Yeah. Uh, but the sticker is a quick identification <coughs> where they paid Harford their dues, so to speak, operated. If, if you all have any ideas or whatnot, you want to get them to me sometime between now and the next meeting, I can work up something. Obviously, you can make a few changes between a first and a second, as long as it's not major, major changes. Sure. But I'm happy to work up something. I just. That's the Most of thing everything we discussed see. was already in there, so I, so I, didn't, I didn't realize it because, uh, but it's in there. We we'll just have to clarify yeah. the uh, positioning of the sticker. Just buy the sticker and stick it on there. Stick it on as long as it's visible. Yeah, uh, probably on the back end somewhere. Yeah, mm-hmm. back fender, open on the mm-hmm. yeah roadside, the center line side. Are they required to have a slow moving triangle like tractors have? I saw one on one golf cart. A yeah. beaver dam requires that, I think. It does say a slow moving emblem, um, and that's in there too. I wouldn't even look for it. Yeah. But I, a lot of them are sold with those, I thought. Yeah. Are they not? Okay. Well, never mind. So I'm going to put a flag up, you know. All you fancy people with your golf carts, you know. We buy lawnmowers. Yeah. <laughs> the golf <laughs> cart drivers are mowing Oakwood Drive. <laughs> that's it. Uh, all right. Uh, I guess that would be moving easy. right along. You want to address that sanitation ordinance? Mm-hmm. Whatever it is. I can. Yeah. Uh, References. George indicated that there's been some other inquiries by citizens who own property within the city that maybe they don't use it every day property, um, but they do have water hookup, and anytime our water accounts have it, our sanitation ordinance requires that uh, you also have a um, trash collection unless you've made other arrangements to show a written contract that you made other arrangements for like a dumpster or commercial pickup. And they've asked to be exempted because they just, they're usually more there during the summer and maybe not the winter. Um, he wanted to bring it up. I will say that when this was passed just a few years ago, this updated sanitation ordinance, the reason was, was our sanitation guys were having a hard time because when they're out on the truck, they don't know whether or not you have sanitation and you don't. If the trash is out there, they're picking it up. So there were unfortunately quite a few freeloaders mm-hmm. to the city. Mm-hmm. So the ordinance was passed to say basically if you have a business or you have a residence or anything in the city of Hartford and you have water, you also have a trash pickup bill. But um, he wanted to put that on there for y'all's discussion tonight. Oh, here's a copy. Mm-hmm. Put a sticker on their trash can. <laughs> <laughs> they just asked that for you to consider if they could be labeled as exempt from that. Uh, They're there very seldom, and they don't bring any trash out, you know. I mean, whenever they leave, they take their trash with them. Is it just one place in the city that's doing that? You've had several well, people. if you let one, you have to let others, you know. We've had requests from others that they take their own their trash home and burn it themselves. You know, they don't live here. They live out in the country. And they requested I take my all my trash is paper, and I just take my trash out to the country and burn it. So why, you know, why should I pay? So you, you end up with all these special cases. Well, if know? they're paying for trash pickup, they won't have to. Well, they're they're <coughs> they doing that if they're already. Paying. What they're saying is the paper that I have, even though it's shredded, is is highly confidential. Or, okay. And they don't want the possibility somebody may go through their trash or something like that. Right. I don't I'll know how you mean break. <laughs> open up that door and you dump your break. break. Yeah. That's the problem is once you open the door, it's everybody It's going to be, yes. Yeah. It, in, as small as you all are, enforcement is an all or nothing issue is going to be the easier sure. way to deploy yes, it. Would be I'd say we maintain what we've got. Plus, we'd have to develop a penalty for trash abuse. 
Well, if they put it out and they said they had it, there'd be a million dollar fine. Our fingers, don't let us know. We have we have citizens who put out an abnormally large amount of trash for a three person, four person family. Right. Mm -hmm. Which I'm sure what it is is kin folks are bringing their trash sure. into the city right. for us to right. pick up and haul off. Right. Uh, see, so that see. they don't have to take it to the dump and pay for it. You right. Know? Why didn't everybody get them a burn barrel? <laughs> I mean, not the city. No, but not between yeah, the city. I burned, I burned stuff in my little barrel. I don't know anything about that. Fire <laughs> pit or whatever you want to call it. No, 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 no. In October? We won't check on that. Yes, <laughs> yes, in October because I'm not near a wooded house, area. Uh, so the burn like, policy morning, doesn't apply to them. Plus, we've had so much rain. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> And they didn't uh, clean up around our house because it's messy around. Yeah, there. there's some of the people I think that are hauling or bringing right. family trash in from other places. So. What about what about the uh, residents in town that don't have water, but yet how, how are they distinguishing between that? I mean, if they occupy residence in the city, you mean like non-payment. Mm -hmm. Like it for citizens that haven't paid and not current with their water. Yeah. Each week, a list is given out to the sanitation department, and they know not to pick up the mm -hmm. trash if they haven't paid for the water bill. We don't pick up their trash. It's and not so a, given it's to not them every week. Perfect method. Yeah. They just take usually, it next door and drop it by their neighbor. Yeah. Usually the. Yeah. <laughs> there's a lot of ways around the Hartford's rules and regulations and techniques and. And why is that? Because we don't enforce them. Well, mm -hmm. we had one fellow that for five years got free water, or he thought yeah. it was free, free water, trash, and sewer, but he found out differently once it was discovered. <laughs> uh, moving right along. So I understand that there's, we're going to leave it like it is. Yes. Yep. Okay. Thanks. All right, and the next item of business uh, that we have for consideration is water customer payments. Um, it's been difficult for our collectors up front because past administrations have done different things, and the citizens years ago may have gotten you know, one they may have gotten to roll over a certain amount to the next month, or they may have gotten to pay a day late or something like that. Uh, and d different administrations have done it different ways. And I'm not saying one's better than the other one. What I've tried to do is, is adhere to the ordinances. Uh, and I tell the girls up front, you tell the people that, you know, if they ask you to do something different, they're asking you to break the law. They Fair enough. Job, they can lose their job over it. But we always have those people who would like late fees. They don't pay by the 10th. They come in on the 11th and put money into the night deposit box. On the 11th, it's a day late, but they pay like it was the 10th. And so they're not paying the, the late fee assessment. And so. Can we not automatically add it to the next bill? Well, that's what, that's what the question is. Mm -hmm. If that happens, is that because our ordinance doesn't allow us to? Uh, and I can tell, <laughs> I don't like to do it, like say it like that. I can tell them that they can just go ahead and roll it over to the next month, you know, or if it's $3 a light or something like that, if it's $5 a light. Well, what's the limit? Yeah. You yeah. know, if it's $20 a light, do you roll it over? If it's a if it's a hundred dollar bill and they pay one dollar, do you roll the ninety nine over? You know, stuff like that. No. Uh, well, where, where does where does it stop? You know, where does 
What's the limit on those things? Um, and, and, George, you might kind of catch up some of them because I know you and Mary Bell have been on here before in several years' experience, but a lot of this was redone because at one particular time, way back when, your water bill maybe would only come out quarterly. So you would get three months, and it would be one bill after three months. And then they would do it, but your shutoff fee, it might be a full month again. Right. And some people have gone, so you never find them. So they found that this was the best way to at least try and stay current and have enough water income coming in and to catch in the people who may be late or maybe non-payment. But um, as you've had, I know, unfortunately, you all are public figures now, so I'm sure you've been attacked and called and, and you've had visitors. You know, the issue becomes what can you do to still be able to maintain your current operations and keep your bills coming in and keeping them paid and still have your disconnect go out, but at the same time try and be fair to your customers. To the majority yeah. of the customers. Yeah. I think the only thing, when I went through the ordinance, the only thing that I was considered was the, I mean, a lot of it makes sense. The only thing is the fee. What do you do with the fee? Like, do you tag the fee onto the next bill? Because the notification of, hey, I didn't realize... I was late, or I had somebody else drop it off. I mean, that's still their responsibility. The that's people, right. It's yeah. the same people yeah. over and over every month. Yeah. Okay. And if they're if they're charged a hundred dollar fee, it's because this is not the first time. Mm -hmm. The first time that a person and and some of them come in thinking, well, is if I pay by the twenty fifth? No. On the back of the bill, it says you paid before. The twenty fifth. Right. The twenty fourth is left. We you giving them two weeks. Mm -hmm. Okay. The contract that we have with them says we supply you with water. You pay us by the tenth of the month. Okay. If you don't pay us by the tenth of the month, we'll say all right. We'll give you two weeks that we'll tack on a ten percent penalty. Okay. If you haven't paid us in two weeks after that bill was first due. We're thinking you're not going to pay us. And so on the 25th, then we're cutting your water off. Okay. The first time we cut it off, it's a $50 fee. The next time that it happens within a three-year period, it's a $100 fee. Now, if you can go three years without having late fees, then it's back to $50 again. Okay. And this happens to... To good people, honest people, people yeah. that are good citizens, mm -hmm. people who didn't get their bill and never thought anything about it, you know, and the tenth came and went, and they, you know, the water paying the water bill never crossed their mind, you know. We offer ACH. We let we'll just automatically draw from your bank account. But the people who come in here on the twenty fifth, the twenty sixth, and and they want to complain because they owe a hundred and fifty dollar bill and they want to pay a hundred and forty and let that ride because we're the city, we're supposed to take care of our people, you know. That that's some of the attitude is, you know, that we we're supposed to, you know, be benevolent to our citizens. I have compassion for them, but I, I have too. rules that I have mm -hmm. to follow too. That That's you right. all have a sign for us. Brace up. Sure, there's a water from my cat. Probably the same He's people the all the time, do they? Oh, I did my part. Probably the same people all the time. It is. It is. It's you no. Know, some of them I'd like to look at them and say, how would you like for me to give you $1,200 a year? I knew it was going to come after me. I'm sure they would take that. All I would tell them is, we'll pay your water bill on time, you know, and that way you'll have the extra $100, you know, every month. There, uh, there's one other thing, that one of the reasons that we also come up with this for, was for lack of non-payment was at that time, too, we did not accept credit card as payment, which now is another form of payment. For water bill, uh, we do charge $4 to use that credit card. Yeah. The other thing that you might not know... But the $4 doesn't even cover our cost there. I no, mean, I bet it doesn't. 
And the other thing you might not understand is from an accounting standpoint, and this is coming straight from our financial auditors, is water, sewer, and sanitation are what's called an accounting standpoint is enterprise funds. The city is putting costs into making product. That's not true for property taxes. Okay. Right. Cost the city anything for the property to set there. So, as far as collection, it's a total different animal. You don't have the choice for water as far as selecting because the city is, it is an enterprise fund and you are required to put costs into it continually to make the product. So, I just want you to understand the, yeah. the, dif the difference. Well, you call people that are late anyway. They, they try. We don't always have a number for people. People sometimes don't have right. mailboxes set up. Uh, there's a lot of different uh, things, but, but Sarah tries to call people, at, you know, especially around the 24th, 25th, and let them know, hey, you know, yeah, cutoff yeah. day is here. I got a call. The next day I set up automatic. Right. <laughs> <laughs> we had a gentleman in here that had automatic, and he's still... Well, he, pays, he paid through his online banking software. Online. That's yeah. like going out here. If I was right. banking at Commonwealth Community and I have my personal bank account there, I go in there and I use their software and I put my vendor in the city of Hartford and pay it. Right. And that's what my comment last month was because no one is responsible for that. So if he set his payment up, his date for whatever date, there's another third party company that CCB. Hmm. coordinates with to do the billing right. for that online software then they will mail that then to the city we'll get a stack of those every month and they're the kind of little four little I mean three little sides you tear off checks automatically in there those are notorious late from every bank that there exists there's no one takes the responsibility for those late payments that's why he that was, did. well that was his first month that he had set them up so he he didn't realize that Obviously, until afterwards. And, and he may, and he may and, not. I don't know. And how long had he been paying for water on time? Over three years. Well, See, yeah. that seems to be the standard. Three years it resets, but if, but if you got may, nine years of good, you should yeah. have. But he may have thought he was paying on time, and it was sure. in former administration. They were just taking it two or three days late. Right. You know. But he so. had just set his up, according to his statement. Yeah. He, he had just set his up, and it didn't work. For him. Yeah. Did so, he change those ACAs? That day. So he wasn't meeting, malicious. No. He no. wasn't malicious in, in trying, but we still hit him with the fifty dollars. Right. Yes. Uh, and no, and that's what we need to. to well, his service was turned off. Yeah. His service was, was turned off. His service was turned off because yeah. he was unaware. And I'll right. give you, I'll give you a case point. Dad got a call the other night. I was over at their house and uh, got a call from one of his employees. She had no water. Yeah. And she went outside and looked, there's a lock on it. Yeah. In terms of turn out, the next day she called, she had mailed a check in. For some reason, her check got uh, lost in the mail. They tried calling, they couldn't get hold of her, and they disconnected it. And she said, she goes, it's my fault. I should have double checked to make sure the check got there, or I should have made sure the check there. Uh, ultimately, it, it always is that is the And we've all had that happen. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But uh, I mean, I think that's part of the issue mine that they're got saying. Turned off after nine years of faithful payments <laughs> and on vacation, neighbors picking up the mail. Just one of those things, nine years. I didn't get a call. I didn't even get a knock on the door. And the guy that was turning it off, I've known him my whole life. So it was a policy issue ordinance because asking him to do that is violence ordinance. I get all of that. But I didn't get, no, nine years, I still got $50. I didn't even argue it because that's the ordinance. In prior years, there's been but, a mayor that was in the shower, and they cut his hair. <laughs> <laughs> Council, yeah, Council, Lynn, like yeah. 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 And so... There are uh, circumstances that He's all lathered up. <laughs> where we punish honest, faithful that aren't part of the problem that we've only been talking about here. Yeah. We've only been talking about the percentage of problems, but with no, uh, I mean, nobody even called and see if Eric was okay. Nine years you've been making your payment on time. What is it falling? You can't get up. Is it no? Nobody checked on it. it didn't help or comfort or anything. So there's got to be something between all of us that we can come up to where service isn't altered on an honest mistake. Yeah, on we history. don't know who's honest and not honest yeah. though. Yeah. Well, let's just punish everybody then. We don't know if you're well, going to speed. Well, they do. They do. They do, and we don't <laughs> like that. <laughs> well, 
we, last week we had uh, a lady came in, uh, never had a problem before sure. with anything. Uh, I don't know, she didn't get a bill for some reason. I, I, I know there's been times that I've got my bill and my neighbors were stuck to the back of it, you know, mm -hmm. and I have to run it over to their house or something like that. Those, because they're going there in a big, huge stack, and it's easily, sure. easily sure. mishandled like that. Is there? But she, we, but she we, came we, in and she paid the fifty dollars, and she turned right around and <laughs> got ACH. She went directly to sure. the automatic withdrawal from her so, bank account, so, so she doesn't worry about it anymore. Why don't they? Why? What can we do from a city standpoint just to educate some people on their options? Hey, if you choose to do this, could that be put on the back of the bill just to help well, put it on educate? Every time, the website, how about a break on, on their Facebook? bill if they go to every, automatic? Every time somebody comes in to start a new account, they get a piece of paper and said, here. How much is the deposit? Uh, if it's rent, if they're renters, it's 200 If it's, If they're owners, it's 100 And so can this penalty be taken out of their deposit? Well, or do you keep we usually deposit to cover their last month's bill right. when they move right. out. So right. if right. you use that. I buy. mean, but you can resupply your deposit. If, if the money's there by, via deposit, they can not have their service turned off. It can be paid out of deposit, and then they have to refund their deposit. They're still being penalized, yeah. but they're not being, their water's not being shut off on the what, first what's defense. What's the late fee and penalty? If Does you that pay, make sense? If, it, it does, but the deposit is it, there to you mean pay for a service the that they already got. On the point of view. Well, I'm, I'm saying, let's just say they stop. I'm not going right. to pay anymore. If you receive a $100 bill, okay, right. so if but you they have to repay well, the Let's say the bill is due by the 10th, and you receive a check on the 12th, how much is the penalty? 12%? And then they still got to pay the fine. If it's a minimum bill, 6 to 3 they still got to pay the fine. If it's a minimum bill, 6 to 3 some odd dollars, it's $6.30. It's almost like it's like insurance. Just so I'm on the page here, if the penalty is 10%, mm -hmm. is I'm just there anything wrong with that. taking that bill? And if you get it in, well, it's due by the 10th, and it doesn't get here until the 12th, call me a hard take that 10%, whatever. put we it have for the next month. And we know when those and responsibilities And then if they don't pay it in full by the bit, next month, everything will fall in full. Mm -hmm. Shut it Period. off. Is that what you're police? I'm sorry. That way to, but, but that's what I'm saying. But I mean, that's what, that's what I'm hearing kind of. If is, I live here is, right, is that mean, years, am, I, am I vocalizing that? I didn't. Y'all had $100 that you dollars. could have invested in. <laughs> you know, I'm saying. My mother lived and here for 98 years. Sure. She didn't get hers back. So, now, so we stole know, from your mother. No, no, you didn't. They what put her a meter in. Yeah. And took care of other problems that I don't think on the street. This point's getting And any down. number. If we have a deposit, I understand that it covers for when you leave anything. I understand that. I'm talking. About, I'm not talking about getting people out of a fine. I'm not talking about that at all. I'm talking about a first offense, not shutting their water off. Still we don't shut the water off on first offense. Oh, you don't. Mine got shut off first offense. Well, okay. The fifty dollars is. That's the that's turn on. That's the they pay, yes. Yeah, we shut off after the 25th yeah. if they haven't paid. Mm -hmm. right. I'm saying yeah. still find them, keep their water on, and and you, they have to refund that portion of their deposit at the next bill. By the or next bill. what? We shut their water off? That would yeah, be a so second offense. I mean, in theory, you could say the minute your bill exceeds $75, your water will be turned off, including fees and penalties. Well, you put a, a, <laughs> a point in time when it hits this sure. threshold, it's gonna it's, it'll get turned yeah, off. Yeah, you can still have okay. the the rule. You can the still minimum. have the penalty, but a first offender shouldn't have their water turned off. Oh, like it should that. never get through that seventy five right. dollar threshold or whatever right. that threshold is. The minimum bill is sixty three dollars and seventy nine yeah. cents, and they're expected like to pay their bill every month. Yeah, and right. let's say they do pay it, it's just late. The ten percent late fee is another six dollars and thirty cents on so it. So you're up to seventy dollars, right? But no, there's only a six dollar balance on the account. The minute the balance on the account exceeds a certain threshold is when they go out and turn it off. Do you want? I don't know how you would police that from a software standpoint. I don't. Yeah. I do know that, so so you understand that because I'm the one that do the refund checks every month mm -hmm. with people that are that are moving. Those checks usually are very small. 
if anything, like because the water bill 30, is always the water bill is right. usually yeah. greater than that. Yeah. And then when they leave, then you're just kind of left with that unpaid balance. And that's where we have been working with Beaver down to see. We've never got actually all the way through that yet, but to see if we could communicate between the cities because we're being left with balances and their <laughs> deposits isn't paying yet. You know, they're in their right. balance. I'm, I'm just. I'm not disputing a punitive measure. Not disputing it at all. I'm saying for a first time, could be an honest, like, like the, Mr. Leach, gentleman, thought he was good to go, wasn't malicious, it was worked out. Now, instead of turning his water off, that he does get notified that he didn't pay his water on time. He still gets the penalty for the late. See, I don't know that Sarah didn't try to call him. Well, he no. said he wasn't at home. He did get home right. to work to where it was and six o'clock. And there again, that's only as good as the phone number we have on the phone. Mm -hmm. Sure. But and I'm telling I haven't you, changed my phone number since 2006. You know, that, and I didn't get <laughs> I don't know if you changed your ordinance to say that first that you waive sure. only a first-time oh. offender. I mean, but you also, I think, from a software standpoint, how are you going to police it? How are you going to roll that so, over? So to that point, Lisa, is there value in understanding, okay, how can we do this from an office perspective and say, hey, these are some options that are maybe there that work within the office the way it's run to then say, hey, can we get, how can we run the city and get the ordinance to work together? Right. And see, until George came on board, we did not make any phone calls to any water customers, period. Because that does take a lot of, a lot of time that that person could be doing. And in other the past, there was a lot of write-offs. At one time, we probably had uh, what eighty thousand dollars when I came. I had eighty thousand dollars in write-offs and late fees and well, unpaid. Uh -huh. We're not we're not insinuating any of yeah. those things be re-implemented because you can't do business that way. Right. But but, but what we are doing now, since George has come aboard, is, is Sarah is calling. She does call the number that's on the phone, but she is calling them to let them know between the tenth and the twenty fifth before the cutoff. I'm saying I didn't get one. And that doesn't mean that she didn't dial the wrong number. That doesn't mean that she had the right amount. Of I'm sure my number. When did you get your wrong. water cut off? Oh, yeah. I mean, because I don't have a home phone anymore. Is wrong. Because September no one's of last year. I think. Oh, you just yeah. barely got here then. I went to mayor. That's right. That's the right. thing well, problem. Yeah. <laughs> then it must have been October. Because remember, we I came in here because what I was home. I took over at the end of. End of October at the October meetings when I took over. Yeah. <laughs> you must have just been freshly sworn in because I came in and I'm like, here's my money. Uh, turn my water back on. <laughs> that's, the, that's the funny part is the people who who are notoriously late every year, every month, that they're, they're cut off or whatever. Right. As soon as they bring that money in there, they want that water turned on right now. Immediately. You know? And well, I'm thinking, because it's I want my money back on the 10th right now, too, and I didn't get it. You know? Yeah. I mean, it's unreal how many churches right here we have in Hartford that pay late or don't pay, and we have to shut off. Thank God it wasn't me. No. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, and, and they're paying... If they do pay, they're paying. Well, I don't know what it is. I, you know. I, I just I don't. don't I just don't think. Of, I will say this first from a system standpoint. It automatically puts you know, on those. Yeah, any understand. first timer mm -hmm. has to be considered yeah. non malicious. So any repeat offenders, not so much. A human person is wanting to remain in sympathy for that. Guys. But uh, just like you changing, Mr. Leach was, was, like was a good was example. So of, like, uh, what we want you to manually avoid. have to go in and, uh, and make an adjustment. Account. We'll always have this, uh, that support those pages if we've uh, recognized right his right. faithful we'll payments. Get more once I know what you're saying. Cool starting to be filled. Mm -hmm. I mean, I would like to be able to find something that we, that we can still find. Automatically, if you had, like, kind of like what you could it was yeah. $3. Mm hmm. Then yeah. you could get a list of everyone's pay. This is the list that they've paid except for three dollars or four dollars. Our system can't do that. Mm -hmm. no. So, like, you know, if it's tacking on the fees, then okay, on the twenty fifth, I run the report. Here's fifty dollars. If that's my threshold, I'm going to go turn all these services off. Fifty dollars and below. You know, I'm I'm not. I'm not advocating changing any of the fees, any of the reporting, right. but just what's the threshold when we send somebody out to go and do that. And if we set that threshold to where a first-time offender may not be impacted, they may. You know, maybe they, it's 
their bill was really high and the fee on top of that just pushed it over their threshold but mm -hmm. you know you can't fix that go pay your water bill mm -hmm. you know they should have done that to start with so that would be the only thing I would ask is see is, is there a an efficient way to do it from a, a city management perspective first and then see if that could be make sense okay. in, to add to the ordinance that's why it's on the agenda because I need for you to tell us because you're the legislative body, we're right. the administrative body, mm -hmm. so we need to know what law, what rem what limitations do we have to operate on, you know. That's why we're here because, you know, there have been a lot of complaints about it because we've been sticking with the ordinance, you know. Yeah. And so you, you tell us what you want and we'll go by that, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll do what what it is that you want, but we need to know. So right. So what? Uh, Ordinance we got pretty well worked up to now. Well, well Mr. Leach I said you got a lot of mm -hmm. well until the fellow came in last week. Well, Mr. Leach and the a lot of complaint comment doesn't match. So Mr. Leach was an example, I, but. The mayor said there's been a lot of complaints, so that's what yeah. we have to address. But there is a lot of complaints when you do try to collect. You don't have a lot of complaints when you're not working it and trying to collect fees. You understand that? Mm -hmm. Oh, I understand that very well. I'm also saying, is that how we reward faithful people that, that maliciously had a first-time offense? Not maliciously. We can still implement all the fees and fines and, and, and everything else that we want to impose on them okay. without shutting off their service. We can do that. And that's what I propose. The first-time offender doesn't lose their service on their first offense. They still are imposed. I don't fee. agree with it. When I put my money down, when I built my house, Not everybody's moved good back here. No, no, no. When I put my money down... Earl Stommy said the bill's due the 10th of the month. I said, that's fine. And I remembered that. Mm -hmm. Well, actually, Sarah so, goes through about a a good five-minute yeah, spill, spill with every customer when they set up an account mm -hmm. and explains all of the fees. Mm -hmm. Sure. Uh, we've never done that before, that detail, but she does it with sure. every single person, so they can't come back and say, well, we didn't know that. The ones that signed up before she explained it can say that. Like you, maybe back when they actually was a Yeah, back in 2009. They, when, when they didn't even... Yeah, when they right. didn't even... Well, lived before, did they not care whether you paid on time or not? Never missed one. My whole life. Uh, well... That's what I'm saying. So you knew that you had a water bill, and you knew that it was due. No. Yeah, you did. No, I mean, if you've it. always paid one, you knew right. that you had to pay for it. I accidentally paid it every month. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I had a wife back that then that kept up with that kind of yeah. stuff. No, but, no, uh, there was one slipped through the cracks because, it, uh, yeah. un unlike my claim of perfection, I, I fall short of that. Mm. Uh, but I am a responsible citizen. <laughs> That pays my bills. That when you step out of line one time, you shouldn't be slapped. We want our law enforcement to not do that to folks. They have a little bit of leeway. They can give a ticket in certain instances and don't give a ticket in the same instance. Okay, well, we're informed that if we do that, that is called discrimination. Yes, it is. Our auditors. That's are. why we want, if we, if we control the ordinance, I don't understand what the argument is of, of, of helping out a responsible citizen that has one goof in their lifetime without turning off their utility. <laughs> I don't know that they're all responsible citizens to begin with, but I mean, you know, I mean, you've got if that, if that's other council you're members here. To achieve is for that first time offender. Mm -hmm. Then, if you had a phrase and you changed your ordinance to where all first-time offenders, but it would have to be every single one. Once that ordinance was in place, mm -hmm. 
every single person, including those repeat offenders, just that we've their, already got. Yes, they would have one free time. Yeah, because I mean. The hard thing about all of it is just trying, as like you said, is to police it. Can we write something where that is doable right. that we can re police it? That's correct. That's what I'm asking. And that's what's, what uh, we've right. been doing, and that's where the problem is. Yeah, what's the cost to go out and turn somebody's water off? How much time does it take? Hmm. We checked Talk around. About. I don't know about that piece, but we checked around with other local areas and our we check we had our fees the same as everyone else no not the but, fees but, but what's it what's it really cost the city well, to go out and do it that depends uh, <coughs> cost a whole lot about more when they come in after hours 20, and you're getting two hours call back time 20 minutes something like that probably george has went to turn some on have you yeah i've i got a keys and Mm -hmm. Tool in my truck. If I had only known that. Do I? <laughs> <laughs> okay. The one time I was a bad citizen after coming back home from vacation and I got fed off and it was in the yeah. middle of the night. I've gone out. I just, it was, it was, it was I've gone out vacation. after hours and turned people's yeah. mm -hmm. lights on. You know, yeah. A lot of retired folks don't even know what day it is. I, actually, it says right here if you read on this, uh, if it's an after hours holidays or something like that. Um, there's going to be an additional $50. Yeah, George costs more to come out. <laughs> well, like, we, for He's example, in that we had the pay 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 come through and say, like, well, who gets the $100, you know? <laughs> yeah. We had an employee that, well, first of all, they were trying to find a employee that could come in. This particular one lived quite a ways away, not in Beaverdown or Hartford. Then he had to come in, turn it on. Well, then the way the policy is written, then you're paying him two hours for callback time mm -hmm. so then but then he does go and get it turned on so then in the newer ordinance we kind of alleviated that that once you pay or you've been turned off the city has 24 hours because if you walk in here at 359 and the guys are done with their shift at 330 then if we call them back in at 330 they are getting two more hours right. it seems reasonable i mean don't pay your bill i mean it's yeah i i think we're compassionate. We yeah. want, but I want to be consistent, though. Mm -hmm. That's the thing. I yeah, want I, to treat everybody the same. That's where I think if we if we had a once your bill exceeds a certain amount on the twenty fifth, it gets turned off, whether it's seventy five dollars or whatever. Well, you, I don't think you can say send a certain amount because some people use the minimum amount. Some people use. Yeah, but if they incur fees, it's going to drive the cost up, right? So let's say they're late. They're going to have the the fifty dollar fee, or the the the, the ten percent, which falls within that threshold. So it just rolls into the next month. And as long as they pay their bill the next month, all of it, then it, it's not they're not going to be impacted. But the minute they they don't pay it on time, and then they get the twenty five dollar fee, or you know the the fifty dollar for the multiple offense. Hey, if you're having multiple offenses, you got a bigger issue. So now. You know, once we hit fifty dollars, we're going to go turn the water off. Could we handle this the way that we're doing with the golf courts, a golf cart permit? Because Tara would be the one that has to. We'll be writing that, and that you all are going to get with her on what you want on the UTV and the golf cart. Since this is an ordinance that definitely the attorney will have to write, can mm -hmm. you all possibly well, give I mean, your recommendations? Well, I mean, comes to a general consensus about what you want, mm -hmm. what changes you want. Because you're not impacting anything other than when we're going to go turn it off, so that we could write it in such a way that the services will be disconnected at a specific. That way, everybody knows the rules. It's not well, going to be. Everybody knows the rules now. You know they don't. <laughs> <laughs> they do, but in like the the example was, you know, he he was unaware and he paid his bill, mm -hmm. and so I'm kind of compassionate that. Yeah, I understand. Without, without notification. Also, this is was going on this topic was going on before this council and at that time he, uh, I was asked by a council member to call KU and Kennergy to find out what what their uh, options were and then I'll even the one that you know back there mm -hmm. so I called and asked cost customer service to find out what they did mm -hmm. and you've got all kinds of different variable answers of what they did um, I forgot which one of it was it didn't matter if you were a dollar and you wasn't paid they turned the electricity off and I forgot which one it was, was service. Hmm. So, if 
we can find something that we can police because that's the whole thing. If we can get something, we can be consistent with everyone. Well, what we got now is that pretty well work. Well, if you ask about a dozen people ever twenty fifth of the month, <laughs> no, no. But yeah, the population is okay. It works. I'm see what happens. Keep what we got then. If it works. I don't know. This time, I think the number of complainers is is diminishing because people are are learning. You know, you know the, the first timers. I can understand what you're saying, and uh, you know we just need to know. But who are the first timers? Well, are they the first timers from the beginning of time, or is it first timers from a new ordinance? Yeah. You know, Ain't everybody over with you or <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> That's the big problem this, right there. From a legal standpoint, because it is a utility, by law you do not even have to receive your bill and the bill is still due. Yeah. That's not true with other types of services. Right. But it is for utilities. And, I mean, and it is, when we take all those bills down there at once, it's impossible for a machine to probably sort those and get those. And so every month we have a ton of people that really probably did not receive the bill or like he said, you know, someone else got it. Um, but you, the utility is something you know you're using every single day and thus it is due whether you receive a bill or not. I did not know that before I came working. <laughs> How come the water bill is early this month? <laughs> I've already received both of mine. I still got three days to go on this month before I get to the first. Now, They're wanting your money early. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Wait, I got you, mine read yesterday. Read that's pretty much what, the 10th of every month. I got mine today. Yeah, it depends on when they go out and read the meters. Usually uh, they come right at about the first of the month. I got both of mine today. Yeah. Yeah. We, for the most part, we got to the post office on the 26th. I'm of the first one month. to get a bill. <laughs> Dropped it on my desk. <laughs> <laughs> Look how much it's like. What does uh, the city's water bill do? The city? Yeah. When do we pay our water bill? The 10th. Do we pay it by the 10th every month? You're talking about the city of Parker? Yeah. Yeah. The city of Parker doesn't have. No, no, we don't have a water bill. Uh -huh. If you want to pay to back to pay for a meter to install it at your city locations, we could we could keep up with that. So if you need any water, just come down here. Just come down here. Cops. That's <laughs> what I'm saying. I'm like, awesome. I yeah. Like the trash can. Yeah, come down here and take what you want. Come down here and wash the car. Yeah. Because we actually talked about that as far as uh, water loss, being able yeah. to calculate it. Keeping up right. water loss. Right. Here, maintenance garage, fire department, places no like that. Water plant. So we, we don't have to pay for the water before we ship it out to folks? Oh, I thought you meant like our bathroom here at City. No, 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 no. I'm talking about the oh. water that the city uses, that people pay for. Yeah. Generally we produce here. it. We produce, produce it. We don't it. pay anybody. We're, pay anybody. we're the manufacturer. So we yeah. can say whatever product. price we want on it then. Yeah. <laughs> we take it. We, we dip her out of the river. We, we Right. Clean I, it I, up. Let me just say this. I pay for those chemicals and for those analysis. Right. Where, they run through a strainer you and won't send it in. <laughs> <Okay. laughs> so, I thought you meant City Hall's. No, 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 no. no those, I, these aren't meters. I, I rephrase. Uh, city doesn't buy water. Now, right. I'm, I guess our expense on how do we come up with our water bill, basically? Okay, they just got through it? doing that. Pass, we passed that. Um, yeah. Our rates right now are exactly what Ohio County's water is. In, you are required, uh, ordered by a grant from mm -hmm. many years ago that every October you will raise your water rates for 2%. And um, we hadn't had an increase in water rates since 2009 until, uh, was it October, November? October. And But every October then we were required to go up to 2%. And that covers the increase in... That was a requirement in order to get the grant funds at that time. Oh, I got you. Before October, we were losing about twenty thousand dollars a month. Right. I got you. Okay, and now it's down to roughly four thousand a month that it costs us. We're losing. Which is what the auditor is, has told us for three years running that you have no choice; you have to raise water rates. Right. 
because but there again it is a you know, now we don't want the boring stuff but it is an enterprise no, it's, okay. it's all part anything. of the it's all part of the package yeah even the boring stuff what you got there I was just thinking mm -hmm. I mean it'd be something for Terry to look at I mean if if on the non-payment, if it was written in a way, and she'd have to do it from a legal standpoint, but paid in full plus all penalties and late fees assessed from prior months by the 25th of the month, that would insinuate before the 25th of the month. Before the 25th of the month. Yeah, before and by is two different things. Okay. Yeah. Well, no, this says by the 25th. Uh, the back of the, of the water bill says before What's the, the 25th. Say? It says by. We got to go by the ordinance. Back of the water bill. Is incorrect. But nevertheless, if 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 it could be worded in such a way to reference Johnson? previous months, that means all those late fees that happen between the tenth and the twenty fifth will get tagged to the the next bill. So we're just giving them a free ride until the no, next they have to bill pay their bill. Out. They have to pay their bill by the twenty fifth, or it gets turned off. It's just oh, those late fees. fees. Oh. Those late fees that are. That you're happen. giving them a month to pay their late fees, what you're saying. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. As long as their water bill is completely paid. Right. But this is only for first timers. I don't I don't know if the system will allow you to do that. That's where I'd ask. I don't want to create a management nightmare for the city. <laughs> it's what you're doing. Right. <laughs> so I need to understand what, what Okay, you have to understand that all of our water billing is done by computer program. Mm -hmm. Okay. And that report, we can get all different kinds of reports. Uh, like we get reports about meters that are registering zero usage, meters that are actually running backwards, meters that uh, the, the electronic device is not reading the meter. We, we get all kinds of reports like that. So uh, we get reports, of, we can get a report about Everybody who's delinquent, you know, mm -hmm. who's uh, <coughs> who hasn't paid by the tenth, can get a report by the ones who haven't paid before the twenty fifth. You know, so yes, you have about five pages usually at the beginning of for the twenty fifth that they're on the shut off. But, and and, and a lot of the time, a lot of the time that the water clerk spends is not in the billing. It's not in collecting. It is all of your meters that are reading incorrectly. Your arts are reading incorrectly. You're calling because you have a really, really high water bill, but yet your usage was the same. Sending someone out to look to see mm -hmm. what's going on there, and then getting a list together for the guys to go and put in these meters and these arts. And it's that it's all that managing of the equipment. Um, that's where a lot of the time is spent. And in fact, between the 10th and the 25th, it's, there's no one, no one pays. They'll either pay by the 10th or they'll pay on the 24th, 25th. So during that time... With the same price, you pay the 12th or the... Exactly. 24th. Right. And then during that time, now what George has added in to that mix is that she is to call anyone that is not current by the 25th. So she has to look up every account up from those five pages, look up the numbers, call those, and you know, if, how many times do we call? Um, I'm just saying I never got one. Hmm. Been there since 2009. So that will not work. I think I hear your phone ringing right now. <coughs> <laughs> A little bit later. Pete's gonna give you the phone. Yeah. Is there a motion to be made? I, I, think the, I think the motion to be made is to do what Kenny's doing right now, reviewing the ordinance to find out for the next meeting on the recommendations for an amendment. Okay. To Has everybody to got a copy of the... But didn't we do that last month? That's why we... Postponed it from last month, so everybody could review the ordinance to mm -hmm. see if anything mm -hmm. needed to be okay. changed. And and we're talking about the changes. We're just trying to figure out 
but no one came, came prepared with any changes. Right. Well, so we put okay. it off for another month to amend the ordinance to uh, for first time offenders. We'll have to get with Tara to, to, for the uh, for the wording of it. And really, that's going to be a legal thing if there's going to be the choice of sure. wording that we mm -hmm. can use. It would be Tara, and she's not here to. Right, that's what. Yeah, she... mm -hmm. So we've got. So what I hear is we've got three options. We can look at. Is there anything we can do to to allow the late fees and penalties to roll into the next month? Would be one one option. The um, the other one would be to put a dollar amount once the dollar amount is hit that we will go out and discontinue the service once it's exceeded would be another option mm -hmm. how, how's that going to work now because you've got some people that are using the minimum of two thousand gallons a month or less and some people that are using six thousand gallons a month and i mean their bill is already going to be a, over a certain amount I mean, then it gets turned off. Maybe that's not a good option. Well, well my, you said it's about seventy dollars. Mine's seventy-eight dollars, just about every month at home. Mm-hmm. I'd like to have a seventy. Me too. Mine's about one hundred thirty. Yeah, the the intent is not yeah. to do somebody. They still have to pay their water bill. That's that's not the intent. The intent is when there's a fee that's assessed because there was a delay in something whether in that person's control or not, they're still responsible, but it doesn't get discontinued, the service doesn't get discontinued because of the fee. They need to pay that fee the next time. Yeah, I understand that. And so whatever that fee is, that fee... I don't think that's unreasonable. Yeah, would be the limit. Hey, uh, maybe if the fee is $25... It should be 50 and 100. Are you well, I would say multiple offenders don't go over 100. Don't go to the 100. You know, put the cap at 50. First time offender is 50. Yeah. Er, thereafter is 100 mm -hmm. for three year look back. And, and if you look under 3A, mm -hmm. 3A, it talks about the first offense. Yeah. Right. It's a three year look back. So for your first time, it's $50. Yeah. So it would be $51. Huh? You would set the limit that we will go turn off service at $51. That way, the first offense. That's one way to... So you're saying automatically a first offender never has their water turned off. The fee is automatically added to the next bill. That's mm -hmm. correct. Yep. That's what I'm... And then at $51, I'm... we're going to roll somebody out and turn the service off. If it's multiple offenders... Well, it won't be 51. It'd be 50 or 100. Yeah. Well, the next right. time it's 100. So this has already happened more than once. We've already educated you on your options in order to get your bill paid on time. Because when they have to pay the $50 fine, they're going to start asking questions. They're going to be like, hey, why is where did this fine come from on my bill? Yeah. They'll be in here the next month. I guarantee that. So then the next month they get a bill, and it's got this extra charge of $50 on there, and mm -hmm. they come up and ask, well, what's that for? You yeah, know? and then we say, hey, look, we received your payment here. It yeah. was late. These are some options you may want to consider. Right. Do you want to set this? This program's great that we have. But we you didn't know. turn your water off this mm -hmm. time. Man. That's what. I, 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 mean, I would just. I mean. So the motion would be. I recommend that we. I mean, Tara's going to have right. to find the the choice of wording yep. to try to achieve what you right. are asking. Right. I understand the gist. Yep. It's going to have to be put in the Tara garden. Right. And I don't know anyone. I know I don't know how to word that to where that would be. Okay, so we'll have to table it for the, the next one. And then the other thing is to see how the software will do it. Correct. Mm -hmm. manage it if, or well, the way she has to manage it outside the software. She won't have a turnoff list for $50. Well, yeah, but you've seen that turnoff list. Yeah. It doesn't say $50. It doesn't say $100. She's already, she has to manually go back and look at every one of those on that list to find out, okay, this first time. She marks those green, I think it is, and they're fifty dollars. Mm -hmm. And in the others, she's got to look, and she also has to look at that customer at the same time, though, back three years to see, okay, have they had anything in three right. years? But so she does that anyway, right? 
She's already doing that. She is doing that, correct. Correct. So she's already doing that. The only the only change would be not sending the water folks out to turn the water off. The fee is still implemented on the next. But mm-hmm. but, it's, and then you, it, but the fee is not paid by the 25th, then it's rolled over to the following month is what you're saying. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's as correct. long as they the paid the water bill by the 25th. As long as they, if they didn't pay the water bill, then they got right. the water bill and the fee, and it, it's time to turn it off, just like normal. Wait a minute now, what'd you just say? <laughs> so, <laughs> just like normal. If, if, if they don't pay their water bill, yeah. and they, then they get the fee t- for being late, the, the, the service still gets turned off because... The, the $50? Yeah, they get the $50 fee. They have the water bill that's 30 40 bucks minimum, whatever it is. Or 60, mine's, $63. Okay, so $63. Well, that's $110. It's time to go turn the water off. But that's what we're paid. doing now. Yeah. <laughs> no, we're not. We're turn, we're, if they pay their water, the $25 fee, we're turning them off for $25. No, there's no... The, I'm sorry, the $50 fee. We're turning them off when there's a $50 balance left on their account. No, no. That's what the gentleman said. No. He didn't pay the... Oh, okay, I know what you're saying, that there is a a penalty that they're not paying after the 10th. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. So they pay pay what their initial bill is that they would have paid if they paid before the 10th. Mm -hmm. Okay, so they're paying afterwards... But they're paying the initial bill, mm-hmm. and they're not paying the penalty fee, and mm-hmm. the penalty, the ten percent penalty. Yep, the ten percent. Okay, so then when it comes up to the twenty fifth, we're still letting them. We're charging them the fifty dollar penalty, but we're also charging them for the the ten percent penalty too. We do that now. Put them both on the same bill mm-hmm. on yep. the next bill. So just an FYI for you, here is her cutoff for short balances for February it is a total of 171 counts. The delinquent amount is $18,052. These would be the ones that George is asking her to call. Um, and then it has the delinquent amount, summer $5, uh, $194. Uh, but this is actually what the ones that you're talking about. So each anybody that's on here right now, she would have to look up to see have they had their water turned off in the last three years right. for mm-hmm. all 171. Then if they have not, then she's going to charge. She would put the fifty dollar fee. Mm-hmm. And if they have, then she's going to put a hundred dollar fee. Right. For 171 counts. And Which, then now on that, has she already? Distinguished first time and second time, and she already. Well, she has to go through. She's she got has to go through and figure that out. But she, so that's what she's doing presently. She's doing and, that. And calling now. the people. Mm-hmm. And like I said, and some of these are, and this is where George is saying, you know, is it $3? What is it? Like the $5 and 18 cents. But then you have one I just saw over here was 300 and some odd dollars. Mm-hmm. And, and here's the other thing also, please do consider that I did not know until I started working okay. here. Uh, for example, here's one hundred and eighty-two dollars and thirty-nine cents. Mm-hmm. Okay, so your average American, you know, is two checks away from being broke. That's sure. Everybody knows that. Bucks. Next month, if the bill is one hundred and eighty-two dollars, do you know how hard it is going to be to pay that amount? Mm-hmm. So the one thing that we have found is by making them pay and stay current, they were able to pay. Mm-hmm. And it is a huge disservice for a majority of people. To let dollars roll. Now, mm-hmm. I know you're talking about smaller dollars, yeah. but just remember, it's not always a benefit. It is also a curse. Mm-hmm. And I remember another water clerk. We said out here, it was, it was like we're just doing a huge disservice to our citizens by letting it roll because then you're making it's bigger than their house payment. So I'm, I'm, I'm well, not either for or against. I just want you to understand the process. Mm-hmm. There's 171 people that are delinquent. And they're delinquent yeah. every month. A lot of them are. A lot right. of them are. It's a repeat thing. And so, how many aren't delinquent? Well, these are, these are all. You, you have 1,100 cu- 1, customers. 1,100 right. 1, customers. So. Yeah. But here's the thing 
This eighteen thousand that's delinquent, mm -hmm. there's a twenty thousand dollars short in revenue they have. That I did pay the bill for the chemicals and all the other. Sure. Things. I mean, there's. I, I, and I and I. Get and that. I know there's humanistic I side. I understand I that too. I don't mean to be cold hearted. I just don't. No. What I would what I would want is just something that we could actually police and be fair. Right. Mm -hmm. That is that that's the. And key. that's our job to figure out how to do that, mm -hmm. regardless of how difficult it may be. Mm -hmm. If it if it serves both us and them, them being us because we're citizens. Uh, See on the issue, that's got left voice. What we're here for. Mm -hmm. Left voicemail. Left message, no voicemail, no number. Um, well, most of them have got caller ID, and so they say it's the city of Hartford, they don't answer it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> I'm just thinking about the other thousand people that. Uh, are doing what they're supposed to be doing. Mm -hmm. And for their first time non-malicious beef, that their service not to be cut that time. Still do the fine, still do all of that other things. What the turning off the water does do, it gets an immediate response. Mm -hmm. It does do that. But no, so does holding the gun. Well, either. sometimes we've had well, one. Got mine. We had <laughs> one. We had one lady that went without water for about what five months or yeah, six it's months. Not, something like that's that. not sure. necessarily true. Right. Those that are repeat offenders will go two and three months. It's very normal to not have the water turned off. Sure. Long. And that's yeah, it. those are the folks who couldn't afford to pay in the first place. Right. <laughs> so they go without water. They do go without water, but. If you give them water right and they're now, not paying not for it, the but, but folks, the but the other money. thousand folks There's are going to promptly money. come down no, and take care of it, and then they're, they're going to complain money. about the water being served when they've never missed one. There has to be something to accommodate those thousand people that they're not penalized for the hundred <coughs> or less. And, and we have to figure another that out. option might be, I mean, we're not unique. We're a right. municipality. Sure. Mm -hmm. Another option might be to check with other local municipalities that have an average population that we do and see what theirs are. Now, we've already done that. We've done that, I think, while Dini was here, but we could do that again. Because, I mean, if it's working for Beaver Down, if it's working for Island, if it's working for Litchfield, mm -hmm. I mean, I don't know, that would be another. I, I, I mean, maybe they've already right. created that will and it works. Right. I don't know. But, I mean, we're not unique. We're no different than any other small Sure. Thing. Okay, you want to make a motion or you want to... I'm trying to think of the words or? for that motion. Pardon? <laughs> I'm trying to think of the phrasing for what we need to do for that motion. I, I don't think this needs to be done right here. I think we, we're on to something. I think we're really close. Uh, and so we, uh, what we need... Tara, obviously, for the uh, legal verbiage, mm -hmm. and you guys, you know, obviously discuss how this would could impact your workforce. All that needs to be done. We we said last month that we would talk about it, and we're and we've talked about it. I, I don't think we're done talking about it, but I think we've made advances. Uh, let me ask you this: you, so that it, if we are discussing this, I can get all three of those options because I would like to run this through our software. Your <clears throat> options. One was for late fees to option? be roll over. You, you said something else. Oh, first, just a first offense yeah. trigger. Okay. Yeah, first offense trigger would would then, not the lose their service. Still impose the was, penalty. Was the verbiage around the rollover of the the fee into the, the next amount, month? Yeah. So. Okay. Yeah. Got that. What was your third one? Though? I thought you said there were three. A dollar. No, there was a dollar amount, and then there was the verbiage in allowing the fee to roll to next month. So. Like when the late fee gets initiated in the software, mm -hmm. does it show? How does it show up? Does it show late fee current, or would it show late fee no, so just by the month that you're in? Late like, fees are put on manually uh, for every account. She'd okay. have to go back and look at the history. She has to look the history. So she'd have to say, "Hey, late fee February." Really, in the system, say late fee February. Well, she'd almost name. have to look at them individually at their history, she their payment history, individually. Right. Okay. 
But I thought you had three. There was the, two yeah, there was allowing the late fee to roll in to the next month. Got that. Then, then there was a fifty-one dollar amount okay. as a trigger point to say, "Hey, go turn the water off." And then the third the one was the first offense. The, the third one's right. what? Right. The first offender. So first, first offender, offender, they still get they they still incur the fees as ordinance it's almost, is written. It's the same thing as the fifty-one dollar. Right. Amount. It's yeah. It's, it's it does it does it the falls same within purpose, the same. But they don't so if lose their you, service. If you get your water cut off, you got to pay fifty-one dollars. Mm -hmm. No, you, you still pay the uh, normal yeah, fees no, that are listed. It'd be one hundred fifty. Hundred dollars. It'd be mm -hmm. yeah, $100. yeah, fifty and a hundred. Yeah, the only the only the only thing different is is the reconnection. The first offender doesn't lose service. They still incur all the fees. All the fees. I, but if it rolled into the second month, but they it rolled into the second it, month, then it's just then they're a second offender. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. And then, if they had it, they, they know now that they got a break by not getting their water service cut off. They still have to pay and the penalty. And the fifty-one is is what? That was a trigger well, number. It's just one dollar. Fifty-one may not be a good. Fifty-one dollars is a trigger not. number. It's not That's a good number for the uh, bill. No, no. The hundred dollars. Yeah. Be a hundred dollars because we are only dealing fifties and hundreds. Mm -hmm. Right. What is the? What's fifty-four? The, the dollar amount is based off of when you're going to go out and disconnect service. So he's saying that $100 oh. you're going to go out and disconnect. Delinquent. When the bill becomes $100? Mm -hmm. Huh? No. I think it when it comes to second. You got month. me confused now. Yeah, I think there's. Yeah, not the dollar amount, is when it comes to the second month and you hadn't, hadn't paid the five previous or, month? Yeah. Okay, and it costs fifty dollars for that. Mm. No, it's already cost you fifty. It goes in the second, it costs you one hundred and fifty, right? One hundred, so you'd have a total yeah. of one hundred fifty then. To cut it off and in, reinstall it, yeah. Please, yeah. And when do you do that? The second Same month. schedule. The second month after we've so already the rolled month over a lot. First month you've already told them. Okay. We're not turning it off here. Yeah, we're going to have to pay fifty, and you've had to pay your your. Uh, the penalty, the ten percent penalty. Mm -hmm. You're late. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, they're not. They're not so getting out of. Back the second they're not getting out of the penalty, but because they are, you, know, you don't have to worry about this. So if you go back to the second month, you've got. Accident, you know, that's yeah, that's what I'm saying. That's that's we, we got to do something. You got a penalty, to where fifty dollars penalty, hundred dollars. Yeah. So one hundred fifty plus two penalties. Yeah. If we roll over the third month, I'm on board with that. They'll never get to the third month. It got my attention. That's one thing it did do. Huh? When they get their bill on at the beginning of the month, they're going to see a fifty dollar late fee, and they're going to walk into the office, and they're going to be like, "What's this? Why do I have a fifty dollar late fee on top of my bill?" And sure enough, I went over to Mr. Fulkerson. Because we've let him go a month, right? Because we've let him go a month without notifying him. Look at it. Come on, yeah. No, they tried to notify the person. They tried to call. See, just they don't have a it number off. they can't Yesterday, call. That's the problem when people don't give you the right numbers or won't give you a phone number. Well, you heard Tara say she wouldn't give her that. Yeah. This is third time I've been trying to get rid of Bianca's call for about six years. Change phones every month. So basically, we make a motion to review to change the ordinance to amend the first offender consequences and what and that review would be have to go to you and Tara because basically we've narrowed that whole discussion down to one tiny little area on the ordinance since he has three options mm -hmm. and it's going to come down to some legal jargon basically, of how mm -hmm. she can write it. Yep. And then you would have to decide when she writes it, right. which option that you would want, or maybe a fourth option. Sure. I still don't see this as any different than the golf cart and the utility, because you're going to have to get with her mm -hmm. to give her the options, yep. and then she's going to have to look up from a utility standpoint right. what legally we can do. Sure. So I'm not, I'm not saying not do anything. I'm just saying right. 
We need to table this for. Tara is yeah. got to be the one that's going to look up the laws to see mm -hmm. what we can do, what KRS says, and then right. from there. Well, that and that would we be can the give motion. Her, you can give her options. Yep. We will. You're still moving forward. Right. We will get with Tara. Mm -hmm. We'll get with Tara. I mean, the we need to make a motion that you're going to want to change it. That really, that's useless. That does not. Yeah. Well, I'm we're not trying to facilitate the, mayor, the man in the oh. okay. <laughs> motion. I'm like, I don't know. I'll have to. Try to get some motion. Yeah. Okay. Right. Get, get them done. Yeah. And, uh, what, whatever does it, that. It's all right. You can it. take as long as you want. I've already run the bed. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but now, if we, get, if we can get those ideas to her, she could actually have a first ordinance ready by the next yeah. meeting. And then, as long as there's nothing major changes between your first reading and your second reading, you could even tweak something a little bit. Sure. And you're still, I think, trying to facilitate moving this topic along. And then you can vote on that ordinance either for it or against it. Let's do that. Okay. What are you doing? All against it. <laughs> you don't even know what we're doing. Go back to sleep. Because normally in a situation like this, Tara will sit there and she'll be writing something out. Mm -hmm. Here's sure. your ideas I'll, I'll of how that she can word yeah. it. Right. She's just not here to offer us that. Okay. So you we'll can give her you. those three options and ask her. I would prefer getting working. this in the I think of those. I know. All right. I next, have not understood the next item. Oh, yes. Yeah, so. All right. Now, what are we? Next, what are we done? We're gonna start all over. This, we're this gonna, didn't go well. We'll talk to Tara and and <laughs> try to tell her what I think that that. Right. I've heard here, and try to see how she feels about rewriting the ordinance to how to incorporate what's been suggested here, and but then she'll come back with. Uh, Proposed ordinance, and y'all can see if you like it or not. So we're not voting on whether to change the ordinance or not right like that. Now. Not right now, mm -mm. because we don't have the. We'll get a sample ordinance. Legal mumbo jumbo to make that motion until we talk to Tara. Once she puts it in a. That's coherent. not my point. That's mm -hmm. that's okay. <laughs> that's not my point. But that's okay. <laughs> Our points have not The point changed. is whether or not all of us agreed to change right. the ordinance. Right. We don't know what the ordinance is yet. We know what the what we're whether we want to, to change do. the existing ordinance right. then. Right. That's uh, that's what I thought we were going to vote on. Is whether we want to change this ordinance and as a and what are we going as to a res to? let me finish. As a result of that, George is gonna to talk to Tara if if the if everyone agrees to go with it. George is going to talk to Tara and get her to draw up that ordinance. That's what I said. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Now, no. it's not what you say, it, but that's okay. Not, not been what you heard. <laughs> no, you didn't. You don't want to vote so to see if everyone around this table agrees yeah. with you to that's even change it. What, what she's no. saying is, is there a motion to change the ordinance as it now stands? Is there a motion to change the ordinance? At all. Well, then, yes. Period. She could make that motion. Huh? Yeah. She could make that motion. We could vote on it. Who? Yeah. Any member. Yeah. Can yeah. I'm waiting. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody yeah. I mean, wants I'm, to make that I, motion. I, you guys know my opinion. Yeah. Like, I, I'm here to, I, you know, I think we should consider it, but okay. if, you know, you could say, hey, you could make your motion, you could kill it right now. That's what we're if trying to. If you get enough votes. That's what we're trying that's to what, determine. Is, so we are is going there a consensus that we want to change the ordinance? Yes. Okay. From my vote is yes. Oh, well, you got to so make, make a motion. I've made the motion. I've been trying to make a motion for 15 minutes. <laughs> okay. He makes a motion that we consider yes. changing the ordinance. All right. I second that. All right. Second. Now, we've discussed the heck out of it. The motion is that we consider changing the ordinance. How it's changed, that's something else. Right. We're just talking about changing the ordinance. All right. If you're in favor of changing the ordinance, the uplifted hand. You were second. Okay. Wait, 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 wait. Okay. Got it. And if you're not in favor, the uplifted hand. Okay. So, toward two, we will talk to Tara about uh, possible changes that I've 
heard discussed and let her come up with a sample ordinance uh, for consideration. Um, all right. The next item of business there on your agenda is the downtown sidewalk change order. Uh, and doing the work that they're doing on the sidewalks, of course, I told you about running into the the room underneath the sidewalk in front of Capers. Uh, they found the other places where there were little small situations like that one, but that's the main one. That, uh, you got the change order. Yeah. That order was about uh, $5,800 to to change and make that sturdy enough where they could put concrete there. They were going to put some corrugated metal over a steel frame and then they would be able to pour concrete on it. They also had to add an entrance down at uh, Brandon Thomas's. Uh, there was no entrance, there was a curb there, so they had to add an entrance way for access for uh, the area beside his building. And then uh, they changed the work order where we have the uh, where we had the flower boxes, they were going to take those flower boxes out and just put a dirt strip down through there and grass it. And uh, I didn't think that was very good. The engineer didn't think it was a good idea. The original plan called for certain flower boxes and lamp posts and things like that. Uh, that was just going to be a, a grassy strip that would have to be mowed and would dry up and eventually just become a dirt strip is what it would eventually be. So the, the original plans call for the the flower boxes with uh, brick pavers in between and, and lamp posts in between. So. Anyway, the change from dirt to having this concrete under base was an additional $3,200. Anyway, the total change order came to an additional $10,253.60. Um, according to the auditor, I can't make that change order decision. It has to be a council decision. So I'm just asking you to approve the change order so that uh, the work can go on uh, that they're going to do. So I need a motion to accept the change Make order. Make a motion. All right. Go ahead. Second. Any discussion to it? I'll second. But what was holding he seconded. The uh, what was holding up the concrete in the first place? What? what? Oh. Was, uh, in front of papers. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good question. <laughs> I don't know if there was anything holding it up. Uh, there was no, I didn't see the hole, okay? But the way I understand it, there was no support for it. It was just a concrete slab that never was enough weight on it to break it. There at the parking lot entrance, there was a hole there too. That, yeah. That was big and well, it, it had some old greater blade there's an I beam. There's an I beam in it. There's an I beam across the entrance to the up there at the edge of the sidewalk. Yeah. Um, well, on the other side of the sidewalk where the lot was, when the citizen bank they just grabbed it and it kept sinking down and people were dragging muffers off going over it because it <laughs> sunk so much. Yeah. And they put a chain up. <laughs> so this change order was for. Well, that work. It, it was things that have popped up that weren't in the initial plans. Uh, you know, that's like the, the hole in front of Capers, the need for the entrance, access entrance for, for the other side of Brandon's property, and then the change from, they were backing off and trying to make a cheaper contract by just putting dirt in instead of what the original plans call for, which is much more, well, Less maintenance, more beneficial to the city, I mm -hmm. think, as far as looks or anything. So, I mean, that was just a, another three thirty-two hundred, thirty-three hundred dollars. So, 
All right, any more discussion? So they still doing the brick Pavers. plan? Yeah. Planter boxes? Uh, yeah. The, the planter boxes will be about two and a half feet deep, four feet wide, 11 feet long. And they'll have uh, a small tree in the middle, and then they'll have shrubs around that, and then perennials, and then on the outside will be just ground cover. More discussion? All in favor of the motion, change order. Thank you. Right, motion carried. Okay, that looks like the end of the program, but it's not. Uh, we had advertised for cemetery mowing again. Um, I'm going to change orders on there. Uh, today was the deadline for the mowing contract uh, bids. Uh, we received two bids. Uh, one of the bids was for and the mowing starts April the 1st and will continue through October the 31st. Roughly 31 weeks. Uh, one bid ended up being $2,200 a week, which that would total up to $68,200. <laughs> the other bid was the same fellow who did it last year, and his bid this year came in a little higher, but it was $40,300. Uh, two years ago, when we took a look at the costs for maintaining the cemetery ourselves, um, counting labor, uh, maintenance, fuel, everything that we could look at, uh, it cost us about $44,000 a year to maintain the cemetery at that time. Uh, last year, he did it for... 37500 and this year he's gone up to 40300 It's an increase of less than $2,000, less than $3,000, but it means mowing the cemetery once every week and then weed eating half of it one week and weed eating the other half the next week. And so I got a lot of positive comments about him last year, so... I'm going to recommend that we accept the bid of uh, Lawn and Order, which is uh, just Jordan Overstreet, at the rate of $40,300 this year. That's a motion. I'll make a motion. To Pardon? Accept. I'll make a motion to accept the bid. Okay. Second. Absolutely. Okay. Which one? Uh, I heard, heard and saw. And <laughs> All right, so any discussion regarding the motion? If not, then all in favor signify by uplifted hand. Thank you. Motion is carried. Um, the fire department has an air conditioner that's gone bad. And um, needs to be repaired. I think uh, Four Star is the one who's installed the air conditioner. And they came in with a bid today or an offer of what, 12, what was it, $1,225. Don't we have that? Huh? Twelve hundred and twenty-five dollars. Yeah, and it, it, let me see if I haven't got it here in all. So I thought I had it. How, how old is that fire department in New York? Not too old. Seven or eight years old. Well, exactly. Maybe it's ten. Ten-year warranty on cash balance. Typically. Twelve hundred's not very much for an air conditioner for something no, like that, is it? Window, you that's just repaired. repaired. Yeah. Yeah. That's for the repair. Oh. Hmm. They'd be still under warranty. But that's what we're parts of it. Yeah. Uh, when was that? Would that still be under warranty, George? No. No. I 
seven or eight? Uh, it's a here it is right here. Okay. Uh, there's a a four ton evaporator coil and in the the refrigerant to go in it. Uh, the, and then the labor to do the work and it ends up being twelve hundred and fifty five dollars. Um, Anyway, I'll pass this around and y'all can take a look at it. Um, yeah, can I see your cash balance? Yeah. This one? Take that. I mean, right do now. what now? Take that. Not for that big of a unit, I don't think it's. We haven't, haven't checked with anybody else, but um, I think he was the installer. And so it's his, you know, his type of equipment he works on. I guess they all could repair it. Um, there's two units in the fire department. Uh, they're both in closets. One of them at opposite ends, and uh, this one's developed some problems. I just don't. Know much about air conditioning to tell you. While y'all are looking at that, uh, I saw anything about funds where that's coming from. Do what? I saw anything about funds where that's coming from, the funding. Oh. Like if you look at your cash balance. Okay. okay. <coughs> The DVD. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let's see, I'm trying to think what else I can tell you about. I bet the water tank you hear any more on that. Well, that's what she's got right here. Oh. Um, last time you asked for bids, and I have been in contact with uh, the engineer, city engineer of Danville. He's a professional engineer. Um, of course, he's the city's engineer, so that's where his primary pay comes from. He does this other on the side, just a project every now and then. Uh, Center Town's the one that told me about him. He, he did their water tank. And uh, so I called him and talked with him. He said uh, that he could do the project. He said that what we talked about, you know, putting a floor in the water tank, cutting the capacity down to 450,000 gallons. Uh, the floor, of course, would be supported underneath. By putting a floor in, that would always allow us to be able to go in. And if we needed the big gallon tank again, we could always go in and just cut that out and be back to a million gallons again. But uh, he sent us a contract, and what he has proposed is uh, much cheaper than what the rates would be if we went through a engineering firm because this is not his primary source of income. But he could do the uh, survey in the tank, uh, 
I'll just read what it says right here. Coordinate the geotechnical engineering for the proposed construction. Prepare the preliminary engineering report. The preliminary engineering report, engineering report is what we would take to grad to present to the Water Management Council. If they approved it, then we could apply then for a grant. Uh, it'd be probably a 50-50 grant. And uh, that would be enough to fund what he estimates the project to be. But he would do all of that, per, the preliminary injury report be the main thing there, uh, for $8,800. And then he would develop contract documents for the construction of the tank, and he would assist in the Kentucky Division of Water construction approval for the tank, and follow through, you know, on all that process to get to our, to get our grant. And that would be eleven thousand five hundred dollars. So we're looking at uh, twenty thousand three hundred dollars to do all of it, ready for construction. And probably, if we got an engineering firm to do it, to be more than a thirty thousand dollar range, uh, about ten percent of what he estimates the project to be. Estimates the project to be about a three hundred thousand dollar project. Uh, what that will still do for us. Since we use about 350,000 gallons a day, if we maintain the 450,000 there, and then of course in our elevated tank on Frederick Street, we got another 125,000 there, it would give us enough capacity to be able to sell water should that opportunity ever arose again. But it would still cut down on the amount of problems that we have with turnover because it would put in 350,000 gallons and using 350,000 gallons, that's only leaving 100,000 gallons in there and we have less problems than if we had the 650,000 gallons of leftover stuff in there. Anyway, um, I'd like to enter into a contract with him to go ahead and proceed with uh, the design and uh, prepare the preliminary engineering report. If we decide to do this, it would go to before them for the Water Management Council in June, and um, then we would proceed to uh, try to get the fund necessary funding. It would be a 50-50 match, so the, sit the city would be out roughly $150,000. That's a small enough amount that I'm thinking maybe a three, four year, five year loan or something like that, instead of issuing any bonds or anything like that. So what I'd like for uh, for you to discuss is whether or not you want to do this or not, enter into that contract with this engineer and let him proceed with design and, and follow up right to the point of construction for about $20,300. Is there I think we should uh, do okay. that because we're wasting a lot of water okay. each month. A lot of chemicals too. Yeah. yeah I make, make a motion. We go ahead and go with well, he's, you made the motion. Yeah, I, I make the motion. We, we go yeah, forward. Yeah, you make the second. Okay. Now, any kind of discussion? What questions or discussion do you have about it? I don't care if I do another project during my term of office. But this is one that I see that Hartford definitely needs. It's, a, it's what the operators tell us would be a solution to a lot of our issues with uh, disinfectant byproducts and the chlorine problem. And um, this is one that I just I feel is going to save us some money. You know, but they're working down there constantly. They're trying new chemicals. To, um, Right now, that's cheaper, but just as effective as what uh, what the older chemicals were doing. So we're constantly trying to cut down on our cost, but this is a big issue on on the quality of our water. And what's the completion contract? How long does it take to uh, finish something like that? 
course, we'd, it would be very short because we would be without the use of the tank, you know. We'd have to just operate out of the small elevator tank on Fredica. Uh, so it's just a matter of once it's dry enough in there, then they go in and start putting in the supports and putting the floor in. And once they get that in, it's done, so. The timing will be... Pardon? The timing will not be repairing it. The timing will be getting the funding. You agree? Yeah. Right. Yeah, because yeah, uh, we'll apply, but we probably won't have uh, any confirmation of, of a grant if we don't get in the, the cycle for this year. We have to wait till next year to do it. The only, when you get money from KIA, CDBG, uh, all these other funding sources, they take the grants or the request, the project request, and they rank them, and they say, okay, this is what we can fund this year. And so if yours doesn't get selected, then you have to wait till next year for the next cycle. And that's probably what would slow this down. This thing may not be completed or even attempted until next year. We had to first get our art. So we had to first get our art so we'll close out the first one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we can't apply we can't apply for a grant till till the um, the project we did this past summer, uh, till that's completed. It's completed but all the paperwork's not done, so we can't apply till all that gets taken care of. Any more questions or discussion? If you're in favor of that, would you uplift your hand? Okay, thank you. I appreciate it. Okay. okay. Are we going to go back to four star or we just kind of skipped it? Or? Well, okay. What job side do you want to do about four star? Fixing the air conditioner? Huh? It's got to be fixed. It's got to be fixed. It's got to be fixed. Funny. Okay. Uh, where, where can we get the funding? Uh, <laughs> they're due starting. How long will we put on our fines? We've been putting on water bills. We ought to be in there now. We're going to go anymore, though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, fire department funds only got what is it? Thirty-four hundred dollars. Yeah, and it, uh, of course. I mean, when did their dues start coming that, in? First of the year? A fun July. Yeah. yeah. There'll be a few people that, we'll get them out before that. There'll be a few people that will pay early. But we got enough money in there right now to go ahead and pay it. You know, it's just yeah. a matter of being built yeah. back up once the dues start coming back in. But, yeah, but it's, I mean, all that money's in general fund anyway, so. I'd say go ahead and just, take it and. Fire department is not a proprietary fund. They don't they don't make enough money to take care of themselves. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. We got a motion. Yeah. Um, is there a motion to go ahead and do this? Yeah. Okay, Tony. Second. David second. Any discussion? Funding coming out of fire department fund. Okay. All in favor, thank you. I don't have anything else except an announcement. Does anybody have anything you want to bring up? Uh, they uh, <laughs> told me about the city police <laughs> that they need a, another officer. <laughs> they need another officer? Yes, sir. That they uh, really short handed right now, and so they need officer. I don't know if they just. How many officers do they have? Five. Five. Uh, County Leroy or Captain mm -hmm. Leroy? Yeah, they, uh, they've had five officers for the last two years. They haven't stopped. James, I believe, is part time. Is he, did, he, did he go full time? I know he started off part time. Uh, 
case in point, they're all, they got one officer sick, so they're they're all working overtime, six, six and seven days a week. Mm -hmm. still, I'm just regurgitating. <laughs> Uh, I haven't I haven't looked at their schedule. I'm just trying to well, I know my neighbor had someone try to break in his house and he called them and never got an answer and didn't get a call back. Hmm. So must be real busy. I don't know. I mean I mean the dispatchers are there. That is, that's definitely something you heard about this going hmm. forward on budget. Yeah. Yeah. Um do we need to talk to Leroy? If, I mean, if that's the word on the street from other officers, do we need to talk to Leroy? He's the police chief. Right. And, and uh, well, we we don't have it in our budget right now. It would have to be after the first of July, right? Before we could hire somebody else right now, unless we made a major adjustment in our budget. Right. Because there's certified uh, officers that he could. Put in there if he had one. Otherwise, there's the academy, of course, that they have to have to attend before they can go on the street. Yeah. Um, uh, I'll make a suggestion that we just table this till next month. All right. That's good. Okay. Anybody else have anything else? Nobody has anything to say to me then. Go ahead. Because if not, I'm out of here. Oh, well. <laughs> oh, thanks for saving my life. Oh, this you're afternoon fine. with that wasp. You look like an Al Qaeda wasp. Yeah, so right. from, uh, my I'm time I'm Yeah. Well, we need to uh, take a look at the financial reports. We skipped over that. Uh, have any, anybody have any questions about uh, any of the financials, the bank balance statements, which we don't have? But, um, anybody run across anything that uh, you want to ask about or if there aren't any then I entertain a motion we accept the credentials second. second okay all in favor thank you Motion to adjourn. Make a motion to adjourn. Okay. Second over here. All in favor? All right. Thank you. Let me announce to you. We have our public hearing on April 25th, which is right before our next council meeting. It'll be at 4.30. And it's for the our MRA and LGEA, which are funds that we use to do our street paving things like that we use the money for other things but it's all involved with the streets and main maintenance of the streets and and other things so that hearing is 4 30 on the 25th right here all right we have to do it in order to qualify for the mra and lgea funds all right uh -huh.